Welcome to the WDW News Today podcast. I'm Eric Morton, and with me today is a very special guest. If you watch WDW News tonight, uh, you've certainly seen her uh, maybe dressed as Moana overlaying <laughs> various things on the stage. Uh, none other than our good friend, Disney Desi. Hello, Hi, Desi. Hi, I'm, I can't believe I am here with TV's Eric Morton. I'm so excited. Do You're... people know that I was on t- I don't think anybody knows except my Facebook friends. Uh, as seen on Fox 35 Orlando, Disney expert Eric Morton. That's true. So yesterday I get a call actually from Tom, who's in Japan, as everybody knows. And it says, can you do an interview with Fox 35 today? I was like, about what? He goes, about all the Nelson Peltz and the Disney board and all that stuff. And I was like, uh, when? He's like, now? <laughs> and I'm in my car, but I'm th- three minutes away. And um, yesterday was a tough day. Yesterday was I woke up early. We got Poppy into this new, like, doggy day camp. Um, took her there. But, I mean, it was like Lee and I had to both go and all this stuff. And so I basically got out of bed, put on deodorant, dragged a comb through my hair, brushed my teeth, and went out the door. So, like, my hair is, you know... I'm a, I'm a person that has to wash their hair every day to get it, if I want it to even come close to staying in place. Oh so I got, like, messy hair. I'm like, I got no comb and brush here at the studio. I'm like, ugh. And, I, of course, that's the day, the one day out of the year that I uh, end up going on Fox 35 and uh, talk. It was like a Zoom. It's like a, you know, I don't know, 10-minute Zoom meeting or something like that. So, yeah, it did air last night. People told me. I and they watched. referred to me as Disney expert. Disney Eric expert, Morton. that's right. Right? Don't you forget. It. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to be an expert at something. And if I couldn't be an expert at something, at least I wanted someone to refer to me as an expert at something. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm, I'm going to change your name in my phone to Disney expert Eric Morton. Disney expert. I like it. I like it. And then today, uh, sorry. I got a new phone today. I've oh. got a lot going on. I, Congratulations. It's not like a congratulations moment. It's kind of sad because I was fine with my phone before. But in this line of work, you inevitably just wear the phone out, right? Yeah. Battery. But my battery was, it was, I had an iPhone 12 Pro Max. I know it's old, like, it's not that old, but it's like three or four years old. Yeah. And um, it's not a bad phone. I didn't have any problems with it. But it started, the battery started not working that well. And then, I bought a bedside charger when I bought the uh, when I maybe when I bought this watch. Like so it has those, like the place for the watch yeah. and it has a place mm-hmm. for. But it's not like I just bought it from like you know anybody, right? I bought it from Apple. Right. Like when I bought my watch, I said I'm going to buy this thing that Apple sells on their website, and it was like like a Belkin or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, more than once in the last six months, I would put my phone on to charge wirelessly at night, and I'd wake up to like. Two percent battery, yeah. like it was. So it was like I think there was a software update that made it like suddenly not charge anymore, oh. and so it will look like it's charging. It sticks to the thing. The light comes on. The green little half moon or whatever. If I'm fifty percent, yeah. Uh, and then it fixed the situation. Fixed itself, I think, with another update, and then recently it broke again. So then my, my wireless charging is not working, and the battery sucks. And now I'm like, oh, now I got to go disassemble my desk in my office to get that charger out of the wall that's, you know, bring it in here or just leave my phone in my office overnight. And it just got annoying. And then even when it was charged up, it was running out fast. So I got this, but it's, you know, rest in peace to my old phone. Yeah. We went through a lot together. (laughs) This one looks pretty much the same. (laughs) I'm sure it's better. I don't know how. I don't know. I got the new uh, iPhone and I feel like my camera's not as good as my old one. Really? Yeah. This has cinematic mode, though. The 12 did not have cinematic mode, and this does. So surely that's going to take better video, right? Hopefully. You know how you can always tell someone took their video with an iPhone? Because at nighttime it has those little, like, rings visible in the shot. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? Those little light dots. Oh, well. We'll figure it out. We'll get it working. Yeah. I am so excited to have you here. It's been, we, I mean, we hang out, we get to talk every now and then, but I don't see you that much. You don't live in Orlando. Right. So it's a commute for you to get here from, uh, can I say you live in Tampa Bay, yes. you know, Tampa Bay area. And so to get you over here, for you to come over here uh, is a big uh, honor. And I'm really glad to have you. I don't even know where to start with you, <laughs> right? I've known you since before you worked for WDWNT, right? 
Okay. Worked is a loose term, right? You, worked. Usually, yeah. when you work, you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you were you've been around our orbit for a very long time, and then you uh, eventually auditioned, yeah. got brought on for the cast, and you have played um, most often for us probably Moana, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You uh, were Jessica Rabbit. Yes. You, uh, when we had our girl? Society of Explorers and Adventures episode, you were Chelsea Chapek yeah. from back in like the 1800s, you know? Uh, I, I know you've done other characters too, but uh, I think most people know you as Moana, is that? Yeah, yeah. Or the Tomato Girl from Living with the Lamb. Oh, uh, the Solon Tomato Girl. Yeah. I had to, you know, I had to show Andy uh, the last time we rode Living with the Lamb. Really? He goes, what are, where's the Tomato Girl? He was looking in the wrong spot. Oh. I'm like, no, no, she's right here. He's like, oh. That is the first word that comes to mind is sullen. I was like, yeah. Yeah. She's a sullen it's, tomato girl. It's funny because when we go to Epcot, my kids say, let's go on Mommy's ride. And then they'll ride the ride and they'll see the tomato girl and they go, there's Mommy. Yeah. Uh-oh, what do we have going on? The wigs are watching live with us Hello. right now. So um, one of the perks of being a wigs at the $7 and up level, you uh, get access to this where you can watch us film this live and walk, watch Jake kind of run the switcher. And uh, occasionally we will interact uh, with the, oh boy, somebody linked the uh, article from Fox 35. Yeah. Was, <laughs> um, so anyway, if you want to learn more about being a wigs member, there's lots of exclusive content. We have stage 89 coming up. Uh, uh, but first, if you want to be a wigs member, you go to www.nt.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash WWNT. And then the wigs do get discounts to Stage 89. Mm-hmm. The price of the streaming tickets has increased now as we get closer to the event. Uh, there are a lot of people streaming this event. There are uh, a number of people coming in for this event. We're going to have uh, many Imagineers. We're celebrating the 35th anniversary of Disney's Hollywood Studio, uh, Disney Hollywood Studios or Disney's MGM Studios, if you want to celebrate all of their existence, right? right? And uh, that event is coming uh, very soon, first weekend in May. Very so if you exciting. want to learn more about Stage 89 and all of, who are, all of our amazing guests are, you can go to stage89.com. I'm really uh, terrified and pumped for this event. <laughs> You're we've been so excited. About. You're so scared. I am excited, but there's just so much to do. There's just so much to do. And lately we've been, as, a, as an organization, we've been treating – uh, my stomach like a dumpster. <laughs> I did. I've just been doing food review after food review. Um, I this is a this is a rare penalty. I had to eat at Mama Melrose's not once oh. but twice this week. My my condolences to your stomach. So every time I so I've every time I've eaten there, it's been like kind of part of a review thing. So I've walked in there and said, "Man, that steak looks really good. They have like some kind of strip steak or something that looks really good, and it smells delightful in here." But I never get to eat that. No. Instead, I get to eat, like, the other stuff. (laughs) And I would say I had to work with Jason and the editors to soften our review a bit because the language used by the reviewers was not kind to Mama Roses. There was some really bad stuff. Oh. Uh, There were a couple things that were really good. They had grouper that was really good. One of their pizzas is really good. Um, Their desserts were I think my original comments, on, I'll give you a peek behind the curtain, right? Okay. We're all friends. Okay. You can read our article on Mama Mel Roses, but if I read you the raw reviews, it might be funnier. Um, let me see. Uh, fried mozzarella sticks. These don't distinguish themselves from any other mozzarella sticks I've ever had. Are they from a freezer? Are they from Applebee's? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe they're from the Applebee's freezer. Yeah. Um the house garlic bread, which costs like 10 bucks. Skip this. The free bread that comes with your entree is much better. Oh. This Someone else said this was the most disappointing appetizer we tried. The bread was not fresh. The cheese Aww. was adequate, but it was not very flavorful. But I got to get to the desserts because the desserts were like, in particular, the desserts were pretty bad. And the flourless chocolate cake, which we said was, I mean, I think it's like a gluten-free option mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. have to take that into consideration. My initial thought on that, it did not get included in the review. It was softened. I said, if you've ever been in the military, this might remind you of something in an MRE. <laughs> oh, no. Someone else said it tastes like the saddest brownie I've ever had. Aww. So, uh, but they had a goat cheese mousse tart. I tried to be nice. I said the initial taste was good, but as seconds elapsed, it became more and more sour. Oh. Uh, thoughts of an odd mixture of goat cheese and sour cream. 
The next bullet point on here is, this was universally hated by our diners. Do not order this under any circumstances. (laughs) But, you know, it's a new chef. He's trying new things, and I... I would like to say, like, there's room for improvement on this dish. Maybe they'll make an improvement here and leave it at that as opposed to, like, you should take this chef and take them into a different career, right? No. Because they're – look, I don't want Mama Melrose's to go out of business. I want more dining options. I want the options for stuff. It was just not good. Yeah. Maybe Um, it was just what you had. Now, I will tease what we're going to talk about in a second here. Yeah. Um. There will be no Mama Melrose's discussed once we get into the meat and bones of this Probably because not. the topic you have chosen for today's <laughs> episode is bougie Disney experiences, right? Or bougie yes. Disney? Is it just? Yes. Yes. So we're going to talk about all the highfalutin stuff <laughs> that the rich people do uh, that we either wish we could do or maybe we've saved up and we have done those things. Or we um, have. Uh, most of them will be you. I we, think, have, we have kind family members who have. Uh, yeah. Paid for things. People with access. <laughs> so um, it's uh, that's going to be interesting. But I want to get a little bit of background on you. Okay. You're, you're a wife and a mom with two kids. Yes. Two wonderful little boys. Yes. I've hung out with them. They're very well behaved. And uh, they dress uh, in the same outfits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that always? Because they always, well, they're, they're not twins. They, well, they're Irish twins. So, you know, yeah. close enough. Um, but I have found that if I try to put them in different outfits, no, I wanted that shirt. How come he gets to wear that shirt? I wanted to wear it. So it just it cuts down on arguments if they wear the same I, thing. I never went through that with my brother where I was like, I want to wear what he's wearing. And never. Well, were you the same size? No. Because my kids are the same size. Well, kind of because my brother was small for his age. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of normal size for my age. So. A little. We could have worn. I mean, I definitely. We definitely like wore each other's clothes sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I've seen pictures of him wearing stuff. I'm like, I haven't seen that shirt in years. <laughs> like, oh, he's wearing it still. You know. So I. But no, I never wanted to look. I never yeah. wanted to dress like anyone else. I, we have friends come visit. Like inevitably, when you live, you've been to my house. We're pretty close to the parks. Yeah. When you live like in the backyard of Disney, you're gonna have more company than. You had when you lived in Tampa or wherever, right? More people are going there for vacation. And so we have friends that come and stay with us. And, like, our one friend, Carrie, she's very sweet. Love you, Carrie. Comes, shows up, and she's got, like, matching shirts for all of us. And I'm just like, that's a no. Okay. That's a no. It's not, And I'm not like a I don't do matching shirts guy. It's just that's a... That a hard no. I yeah. only dress myself, and I wear what I want to wear on that day. That's why I have a closet full of stuff where I'm like, I can't wear that today. It doesn't look good on me today. So I'll dress the boys in the same thing. I mm-hmm. I can't picture myself or Michael getting in on that action. Right, like the matching T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. The other thing is I'm like just particular about fit, style, and fabric of a T-shirt I wear, right? Yeah. Like I think this probably comes more with me as I've gotten older and fatter. That just like I'm like ah man, let me wear something let me wear something that's a little I don't want to wear this really thin fabric that shows every drop of sweat right yeah you know I don't want to wear this like light color that you look around and anybody wearing that color all you see is like lines of sweat and every like imperfection in their body I don't want to wear that so that's just the way I am I'm like please do not give me matching clothes you know what when we have uh, uh, great clothes though like. These park candy shirts. It's lovely. I can choose my own every time. They're stretchy. They're comfortable. I feel good. And uh, and I don't care. Yeah, sizes? it doesn't mean that people don't make mean comments about me being fat in the YouTube comments. It happens. That's okay. Especially food reviews. Of course these fat guys don't, don't uh, they like this food, you know. It's okay. People are, some people are mean and some people's lives are not fulfilling. They, it's okay. <laughs> I, don't, it, it does, I do not take it personally. As someone once told me. What other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah. Right? And if someone is saying things like that in YouTube comments, it's not about me. I mean, it's not. Right? Yeah. Who do I, If I'm going to anonymously post insults at people, it's not, a, it's not a problem with them. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I don't care. Anyway, mom of two. I think you're great the way you are, Thank Eric. you. Thank you. Mr. Rogers said the same. <laughs> I believe him. Um, but uh, mom of two. Yep. Your boys are how old now? Uh, Three and four. So this gives you really interesting perspective into things because you like to do bougie things. 
I, is that fair to say? I I, uh, I enjoy the finer things in life, but uh, I don't need to yeah. just always do the bougie things. Right. But you have, um, part of this is because your husband works in a travel industry. Yes. Is it, can I say that? Yes, he okay. does. Mm-hmm. You don't have to edit that out, Billy. <laughs> uh, Desi's husband works in a travel agency, and it has afforded you guys um, some opportunities, but also just it means that the both of you have a passion for travel. Yes. And so you have been almost everywhere, and we're going to do this comparison because I think we've started on this before, of how many World Showcase countries you have visited. Almost all. What are you missing? After this year, I'll be missing Norway. Okay. And I was supposed to go in 2020, but as you can imagine, that got canceled. Yeah. Um, And I know you've been to Norway. I have been to Norway. I've been in Norway, Mexico, Canada, United Kingdom, um, France, only in the strictest, most technical sense. (laughs) Uh, Because I was there for like an hour. Um, Africa. I've been to Africa. Okay. Does that count? Well, I've been. There is an Africa (laughs) area of Epcot. I've been to Africa, but I Mm -hmm. haven't been to, uh, is it Equatorial Africa? I have been to Equatorial Africa, which was going to be a pavilion in in, uh, Epcot. I've only been to Egypt and Morocco in Africa. Okay, yeah. Um, I have been to Equatorial. I've been to... um, Liberia, uh, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, Central African Republic, all the really fun places to go. Um, these are back when I was in the military and I had reasons to be there. Um, but yeah, they, in fact, the, uh, the military doesn't acknowledge this, but it is possible. Some people believe, some people are saying that the malaria medication they made you take when you went to these places could have long lasting effects. Oh, well, A lot of people great. believe this except the VA. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, but yeah, I've been there. Let's see. I've been. Here. My husband was in Africa when he was. Uh, oh, really? Well, he went to the Seychelles. Does that even count? To what? Seychelles. Uh, I get. I mean, I went to Canary Islands. Is that Africa? Does that count as Africa? It's a territory of Spain, but it's off the coast of Africa. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that counts. But it's not an Epcot country anyway. No. Right. Uh, did I miss anything that I've been to? I don't know. I've been to a lot of them. Mm. I've been to more of them at Epcot than I have in the real world, though. Um, and I have been in Norway. I've been to Bergen, and the area, um, the area of the Norway Pavilion with those kind of old fishing building looking buildings. Mm-hmm. That's an area called Bryggen. That's in Bergen, so it's modeled after that. And I have taken tours through that area. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Bergen's neat. It was a crappy day when I went, so the weather was it was rainy and overcast. But you go up a they have like a funicular that goes up a sort of mountain, and you have a good view on a on a better day than when I was there. Uh, Norway. I've actually been, I went there once when I was in the military, and then I went again on a Disney cruise, and it is uh, just a fantastic country. Very expensive. Yeah. But a fantastic country to I've visit. I've done Stunning. pretty much every other Nordic country but Norway. Yeah. Well, I've done Norway, and that's it. I've not been to, um, I've not been to Sweden or. I've been there. Finland or Denmark. I don't know who's considered there. Denmark uh, to, considered Nordic versus Scandinavian. I know there's some debate on that. I don't remember. Um, I did go to uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. So you have been to Denmark. Uh, yeah, sorry. I did go there just to get on the—I went to Tivoli Gardens oh, yeah, theme too. park. There was a shooting the day I was there. Oh, my gosh. Everyone talks about the violent <laughs> Americans. The day I was there, there was a shooting in Tivoli Gardens, oh. right? So you look. I think this is J- June of twenty seventeen, maybe. Okay. I don't know. June June uh, June of twenty seventeen sounds right. And um and there was a shooting there when I was there. Um, it was a lovely country, and Sweden is right there. Yeah. Like, in fact, I could have taken a little train and and touched my foot on Swedish soil and turned around in like twenty minutes and come back. I think, but I I didn't. You know, there's a cool like golf tournament going on there. And you can see Sweden the whole time you're steaming up to Norway, steaming like I'm, just, <laughs> like I'm, like I was on like you know the Titanic or something. But uh, yeah, Norway. That if that needs that should be on everyone's bucket list. What a yeah. beautiful destination. What an interesting place geographically. And if you're able to go back in, there's an area. I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Okay. Um, a guy who seemed to know what he was talking about on our cruise called it gear hunger. Okay. Um, it's spelled like G E R 
A N G E R or something like that. I'm going to believe you because I have is, no way to dispute uh, this. It is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Supposedly, some of the areas in Frozen are based off of that or whatever. But oh. like very steep cliffs going into very deep, beautiful fjords, waterfalls. Royal Summer House? Yeah. Yeah. They have, that's there. You could meet Anna and Elsa, I'm sure. Um, uh, boy, we have. I, I get confused because there's Royal Summer House. Right. Summer House, right? Mm hmm. Um, there is oh, I guess Sommerfest summer. in Germany. Yeah. But and there's Summer House. House on the Lake at Disney yeah, Springs. Sorry. I've been to all Disney of them. Springs. I've been to all three. So, um, anyway, enough about me. Uh, let's get back to you. <laughs> you uh, grew up in the Tampa Bay area. Is that Were you yes. born? I born know and you, raised, yeah. you have Hawaiian heritage. Is that right? Uh, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, Lived in Hawaii for most of my life, but they moved to Florida maybe two years ago. Okay. So, um, okay. Spent and, lots of time in Hawaii. And you grew up in Tampa Bay but area. But I grew up here, yep. And then you went off to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was before you started overlaying everything with the Moana <laughs> logo, I think, though. Uh, okay, and then WWNT, the first time I met you... I was live streaming in the parks. The day after the Bucks The won. Buccaneers had just won the Super Bowl, and Rob Gronkowski was there. Yeah. But partially because of, like, COVID and partially because I don't know why, they wouldn't bring him out. Right. Remember this? Right. So we I'm, like, live streaming it in the hub, and then they, they're like, well, if we bring him out, people will gather around, and we don't want people to gather around. But, but then as they waited anyway. and waited, people gathered around waiting. So as they were like a can't-win situation. Basically, the way I remember it is that they, um, they popped confetti behind the gates like the bypass behind, mm -hmm. you know, the Main Street bypass. So you could see the castle, they popped the confetti, and then they took him out of there. Yeah. They didn't have anything public. So you could kind of see the float he was on, but we couldn't actually see him. Right. That was an interesting day. Yeah. So I met you when I was live streaming because you were a, a I don't I know if you were a Wigs member. Were you, I was a yeah, Wigs, Wigs member. member. I might have been on pressing issues by then, but I was definitely a Wigs member. I don't think so. I would have known if you were on pressing issues. Okay. We not, might not have even had pressing issues quite. I don't know. Pressing Issues was a show we used to have uh, hosted by none other than Jason Diffendahl. And, um, that was my first. And it had a, a, an army of panelists that yeah. would join and talk kind of long-form content. My first uh, intro into the WDWNT family. Yeah. I remember that, though, because you took a selfie with me, and then I kind of, I think that when I saw it, it looked like I was kind of blowing you off. So I was like, hey, hey, if you're watching, come back. You can take a selfie whoever you are, you know, because I felt bad because I was like, kind of like, eh, I'm on the phone. I'm live streaming. I'm like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I, was a big I, fan. I met your husband and your kids. Yeah. So I met the whole family, and you guys are wonderful. Of course, since then, I've been to the parks a number of times with you. Uh, obviously, we've worked on a number of uh, shows together, uh, hung out with your kids. I experienced the journey, your journey of water, <laughs> That's uh, right. inspired by Des Disney Desi, yep. uh, with them. So that was a great day, and um, I will always remember remember that day because yes. uh, my brother was there with us, yes. and uh, I know that we had a lot of fun that day. And your kids, your kids were a lot of fun that day. Yeah. So, um. So then you end up. How did you audition for W? How did you get on this on the on air? So talent? I. Originally had an audition in 20, March of 2020. I think it was scheduled for like March 17th, 2020. Okay. And it was like the same day the park shut down. So mm. Colleen called me and said, we got to cancel. We'll postpone this. So it was a full year later mm. when I joined Pressing Issues. And then a few months after that, I got to finally audition um, for News Tonight. Okay. Um, what did you do for your audition? I dressed up like Muggsy from The Great Movie Ride. Okay. And I was homeless. So I talked about how I was homeless and I needed a job, and that's why I was here at WDWNT looking for a job as Muggsy. That's good because I don't know if you know this. Sometimes we let people live in our studio. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> um, I, it's funny. I auditioned. My original audition was a um, like a month before you maybe because I my first episode was uh, – 2020 in February. Right. So, so it was the dating game. I think I had I had heard them saying that they were looking for more people. And I was like, oh, man, that would be so cool because th this is my favorite show. 
Um, but I was kind of nervous about it. And I was like, I don't even see any other women on there. And then I finally saw Miss Allison come on. I was like, well, if she can do it, then I can do it. Yeah, because I met Allison when she she came as uh, as just a um, a guest. As yeah. you know, she was in the uh, a live in studio guest. And I think at that time we were in the old studio on I Drive. Mm-hmm. That place was. I got to do. The place was. I mean. <laughs> It was interesting, right? So it's basically above a bunch of businesses in a strip mall, and you will go down this hallway, legitimately like 500 feet down a hallway right. from the nearest bathroom, right? And you go in there. We had no plumbing, no anything. You just go in, and there's like the studio was maybe 40 by 30 or something like that, and that's the whole. But it was an upgrade from Tom's apartment. It was apparently an upgrade from Tom. <laughs> I, I That predates me because I, I came in. I didn't know anything about WWE oh, I've been when watching I auditioned, right? for a long so, time. Yeah, I didn't know, so I walked in blind. I knew enough that he did like a monologue, so I kind of made a monologue, and I did a, I did three things I like and three things I hate at Disney, or three good things and three bad things. I think it was like a quick hit, like, yeah. I like this, I like that, I like this. This sucks, this sucks, that sucks. So um, I remember the line that got Tom laughing. I said that the drinks at Abercadabra are were such a bad deal that I figured that run Disney had to be behind them somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, then Allison was in the studio uh, for one of the, cause I did maybe three episodes before COVID and then um, obviously met you later. And then this, the cast got bigger and now the cast is kind of, uh, we may add in the future. I don't know. We haven't put out public auditions for a very long time, though. Very coveted, very coveted role. Yeah. I think it's because we put that star on your dressing room it, door that keeps you coming back. It's funny because I was such a big fan, and I, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that I get to go meet Tom and Eric and everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Sabrina comes on. She's like, somebody's forwarded me this link. I've never heard of this company before, ever. Yeah, that's kind of how I was. <laughs> I, although before the audit, when they finally reached out to me to audition, um, I did w- listen to uh, an episode of News Tonight because I was at the time driving a lot between um, Tampa and Orlando. But it's back yeah. when I lived in Tampa, but all my work life was in Orlando before I moved here permanently. So I did uh, listen to it a lot uh, on I four. Yeah. So I had a feel for kind of what my audition could be, but they're like, hey, your audition can be a character like Jameson or Maria, and I'm like, I, these names mean nothing to I know exactly me. who Jameson and Maria right, are. But they meant nothing to me at the time, right? So, right. Um, but here we are. Uh, I ended up, you know, obviously, on-air talent at WWNT is not a full-time job. You're not going to feed your family doing it. Uh, well. You probably can't feed the bird that poops <laughs> outside of our office with it. No. But, um Ended up getting hired and uh, working here now. What is, uh, I don't know what is the next level beyond full time, all time, all, all the time. I'm just <laughs> here all the time. And then I get to go eat Animal Kingdom stuff tomorrow after the media event. Uh, there's a media event tomorrow morning for uh, the opening of Star Wars, uh, uh, Star Tour, the new three scenes of Star Tours. So that will have already happened by the time this airs. Also, what will have already happened is uh, Lee, my girlfriend, is obsessed with the uh, NCAA basketball tournament because she she graduated from Purdue and they're in the Final Four for the first time since 1980. And uh, if I know what's good for me, I will be right there with them. You know, I, I hope they win. Good and luck. To help me hope they win more, I placed money on them winning with Florida's only legal betting service, the Hard Rock app, brought to you by the Seminole Tribe of Florida, <laughs> the exclusive gambling partners of the Florida government. All right. That's well, that right, there's one right in Tampa. Come on down. There and... is, or you don't need to go there to use their app. There's one in Tampa, one down in Hollywood. The one that's shaped like a guitar. Is that one's way cooler. The one in Tampa's fine. The thing is, though, it, it it's still a it's still a local casino, a local like you know, like you see in any town that has legalized gambling to try to raise a few bucks. Yeah. Um, for you know education, and um. I expect a certain I, I expect a certain thing when I go to a casino like that, which is they're nice, there's stuff to do, but it's kind of affordable and friendly and kind of hometowny too. Yeah. And that place, man, 
they price you out as quick as they can. Like you show up on like a, a Friday and they're like the cheapest table in the joint's $50. I've never, never, I've gambled. never actually gambled. Oh, I man. just go for like, you know, they throw events and parties and stuff there. No, so it is maybe not $50 a hand. Maybe there's a table you can find that's $25 a hand, a hand. But essentially what it is priced like you are at one of the uh, bougie oh, Vegas casinos. Okay. They're not priced like you're at the Tropicana or Excalibur they think or the, downtown, the right? They, yeah, they go straight to Bellagio. Well, think about it. They have no competition right. because the Florida legislature has made sure by law that they have no competition. Right. So why would they do that, right? You're not going to walk. What are you going to do? Walk down the street and go to <laughs> go to Wawa and buy a sandwich instead? <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. It's a big, big week coming up. I got some personal stuff. Colonoscopy. Can we talk about? Oh, I don't know if we talk about that on the podcast. Yeah, that's coming up uh, on Thursday. So, well, I guess you're not allowed to do any food reviews on Wednesday. I'm not, and uh, that is important because 1900 Park Fair reopens on Wednesday, and I can't go. Oh, the guy doing the colonoscopy would be very upset if I did that. Probably. I'd probably have to buy him a new GoPro and a new <laughs> flashlight. You know, it's like, um, but I tried to segue by using boo- the term bougie. Um, I don't know if bougie is an appropriate term. Does that? If, I don't know. High end Disney experiences, right? This can be. I mean, this can be merchandise too. Yeah. It's not just expensive hotels and restaurants, right, right. Desi? Right. So um, I happen to know some of the bougie things that you have done. Okay. And you can enlighten me on some of the others. Okay. First off, we have to start with. The one thing that was created exclusively for people with disposable income uh, that I know you've done, which is the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. I feel like it was done exclusively for me as someone who is. That is a terrible (laughs) business plan. I know. Like, I'm sure you're you're doing pretty well, Desi, but I don't know if you can alone support the (laughs) hundreds of cast members that work there. It was targeted specifically to me as someone who loves Disney loves Star Wars, loves cosplay, and loves specifically Kylo Ren and the sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot of us. Yeah. So I kind of understand um, why they closed it, but it it was an incredible experience. I will say that was worth Everyone who's done that has said it was an incredible experience. Um, Everybody also said, like, it's overpriced, right? Did you feel... I felt like I got my money's worth, but I also did split it with three other women. So it was... Uh, there were four of you, yeah. all women. You didn't Girls bring weekend. your husband and children on this? <laughs> um, so my husband and I, as we your talked about... Your three-year-old probably would not appreciate <laughs> the experience as much. As, as we talked about earlier, my husband and I have been trying to tick off every Epcot country. And one that he had... The only one that he had not been to yet was Canada. So... I got to go on the Galactic Star Cruiser for the weekend. He got to go to Canada for a weekend. So that was our trade-off. So now he can say he has been to every You went to outer space, and your husband went to America's hat. (laughs) That's right. That doesn't seem like there's some inequality there. I felt like I got the better end of that deal. Did you get, like, a discount, or did you pay full price? Did you have a hookup? Uh, Can you we say? paid full price because okay. it was after they announced that it was closing. So no AP discount, oh. nothing like that. But um, I did go with Kamila was one of the women in the room. She's yeah. um, from uh, Vacationer, Kamila. Yes, she is uh, on Park Center. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, she is a travel agent herself. So as soon as they opened up. Uh, after announcing that they were going to close, as soon as they opened up uh, bookings, she was on the phone immediately and got us in. Okay, great. Um, I have a technical question about visiting every country. Because I want to go to Hong Kong Disneyland. And does going to Hong Kong count as visiting China? Because I know that there's a, like a one nation, I forget the name of the, it's, like uh, the, the Chinese government would be very upset for suggesting that Hong Kong is not China. But I think a lot of people would say that that doesn't count. It, and I want to know if it counts on your I think, list. I don't remember what year it was, but it, I feel like it's been within the last 10 years that Hong Kong yes. uh, became it reverted of, yeah. back to Chinese control. But, I think, but is it, do, do you have to, to, to check the Epcot box, do you have to go to mainland China? Uh, so just based on world showcase countries, uh, 
I have been to mainland China. I haven't been to Hong Kong. Okay. But if I go to Hong Kong, but I skip out on Shanghai, does it count? Because technically it's China. I mean, technically it's China now. So, yeah, I'll say Is that like me going to Canary Islands and saying I've been to Spain, though? I don't know. My husband likes uh, saying how many countries he's been to. I think he counts Hong Kong separately. Oh. So he can be like, I've been to 71 countries. I don't know how many I've been to. I had a sea bag when I was in the Marine Corps that I had written all of the countries down. But, I mean, some of them were like, like I counted Puerto Rico. Uh, even though, you know, it's like a U.S. territory right. or protectorate or whatever the technical term for it is. Um, but I had I had a number. Of, I don't remember how many, but I've certainly been to a lot. and uh, But not nearly as many as you, as you and your husband. You guys are true world travelers. Yeah. I don't even remember where you went recently where I was like, every time I look at Facebook, I'm like, <laughs> Desi, damn it, Desi. Did we're, you guys go to another country? Going to Mexico on Saturday. Are you really? Yeah. You've been to Mexico, though. I have, yeah. But I've never been to Honduras, which we're also going to on this trip. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I want to go to Honduras. So that'll be the one country that I check off, and we're also going to Belize, which I have been to before. Is so this Michael a cruise? Hasn't. Yes. Are you getting on the cruise in Mexico? No, in Tampa. So okay. this, this will be our first time going out oh, of so Tampa. Oh, so it's a smaller, older cruise ship. Yeah. For those that don't know, <laughs> the biggest... Modern cruise, all modern cruise ships, they just get bigger because they think bigger is better, right? right? Um, They cannot fit under the Sunshine Skyway, which is hard to believe if you drive over the Sunshine Skyway because it's it's super tall. Mm -hmm. And it was built after the original Sunshine Skyway in 1980 was um, hit by a vessel and the bridge collapsed, which we learned a lot of lessons from that. And thankfully, it's never happened again. Oh, wait. It just happened again. I'm like, how does that happen after but not this, the Sunshine the Skyway? Same exact, not to the Sunshine Skyway. They put bumpers around it. They literally did the simplest solution that, like, if you gave it to one of your, your, to your four-year-old and said, hey, if you hit this bridge with a boat, it falls down. What do you do? And he goes, I surround it with stuff. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah. But anyway, the cruise ships are limited uh, to those that can fit under the Skyway. And there's a lot of cool YouTube videos of watching people leave Tampa Bay and, like, they're up on the top deck and to see just how close some of that, like, radar equipment and stuff comes to the bottom of the Skyway. So this is probably Royal Caribbean or Carnival then. Royal Caribbean. Okay. And which ship? I have no idea. My, it's something as, of as the you, seas. As you mentioned, my husband is in travel. I, I leave a lot of stuff up to him, and then I show up, and I'm surprised. So I'm— um, I went on my first Royal Caribbean cruise in November, and I had a wonderful experience. I was on a ship called the Mariner of the Seas. So it is big. Yeah. But it is not big like these new ones that they're cranking out, right? And I still felt like, I I was like, I thought this was going to be small. It's pretty big. And I was, then I go up on deck, and in Cosmo, like the the wonder of the seas pulls up next to us, which until the icon just launched, Mm -hmm. I think the wonder, I think it was called the wonder of the seas, was the biggest cruise ship in the world. Yeah. So it pulls up next to us. I'm like, oh. Yeah, we're we're dinky. I've been on the Oasis, which I think at one the time Oasis was the is the biggest. first of those ones yeah. that had the open like Central Park, mm-hmm. right? So my ship, the Mariner of the Seas, has like a central plaza like that, but it is not open to the. It's before they figured out they could, that's it's just an indoor area. So now that's kind of like an open, like cool. It looks awesome. Yeah, it looks awesome. So now, uh, because if you're like me, and you get bored when you're on a cruise and Decide to gamble. Now their casino people are sending me packets. All, I get one a week of like, want to go on a free cruise? We're going. To, I have my pick of all these cruises to go on for free. It's like interior, you know, yeah. cabin and all that. But a free cruise, man, Heck just yeah. come lose more money with us. And I'm like, okay, so that makes my gambling budget a thousand bucks if I was going to spend a thousand bucks on a cruise or what or. Two thousand or however much. It, right. I don't remember how much it costs to go on a cruise. It's not that. It's certainly cheaper than a Disney cruise. It it is very much so. And I'm going on a Disney. Speaking of bougie, I'm going on a Disney cruise oh. in June for the opening of Lighthouse Point. Wow. At Lookout K. So you are bougie. Lookout Key, Lookout K. Yeah, that'll be bougie. Well, I don't. I'm not paying for it. The company's paying for it. <laughs> um, because we are going to be there the first day it opens and see what stuff they have. And I'm guessing it's going to be an island, and it's going to have water, and it's going to have food, and it's going to have activities. So I'm very excited for that. Wow. No casino, because Disney. 
You're like a fortune teller being able to tell all these things ahead I of time. I can just tell you ahead of time how my <laughs> vacation is going to be. So it's not a vacation. I will be working. It's a very short cruise. It's like uh, a three, two or three nighter. That's the thing with Disney cruises. They're all fairly short. So that's why I prefer. I'm, we're getting off t- track of the bougie I stuff. I know but, we're not talking but about if our you topic like, at it's all. Okay, this is how the <laughs> podcast goes. We never stick to the topic. Um, I like the smaller Disney ships because you go to better destinations, typically longer cruises, right? So if you if you want to go to Alaska, which is an amazing destination, yeah. that I'm dying to go. I've never. I've done it twice. Yeah, I've never gone on an Alaskan cruise. I'm dying to. Right? It's also one of the very few states I've never been to. Um, then you're going to be on, like, the Wonder, right? Uh, a magic class ship, right? The Magic's the, the OG, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Although I've heard she's not aging very well at this point. Aww. I've heard there are a lot of complaints that she's creaky. I don't know how to fix the creakiness. I don't think you can. Um, I try to but fix like my the, creakiness, too. They don't, it's not always like this, but it always feels to me like the Wonder goes to... Um, like Alaska for the summer, Mm -hmm. and the magic goes to Europe, right? So the magic is doing Norway and British Isles and and maybe Mediterranean, and the wonder is not. Now, that is changing because they're getting more and more ships, and I think maybe the Dream or one of those will be enlisted to do some of these longer cruises now. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Seven nights, perfect. Even five nights. Three nights is not enough time. Three nights is – I talked to a server one time uh, on the magic, and he said he hates doing the three-night cruises. He said because he does it because he what he loves is the interaction. Right? right, yeah. And he's like, so the first night, they're just getting there. Second night, they go to Palo. Third night is farewell. Like, it's like you're feigning this connection that you've made with people that you really, you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's not quite enough. Yeah. I feel like, I understand, like, they have their place, right? Especially, like, you want to get some locals, you go out for a quick, like, long weekend or something like that. That's great, but I, in general, when you're spending that much money, I just think it's a waste to do a three night cruise. Yeah, that's just me. And to me, cruising is the closest thing we have to a relaxing vacation right now. It's like everywhere else, it feel, I, I know there are other remote destinations I can go to that are fantastic, but for like exce- an accessible vacation where you feel relaxed and chilled out, a cruise. In particular, a few years ago when it wasn't. When the internet wasn't so affordable. It used to be like, I'm not getting internet. It's like a billion dollars an hour or something (laughs) like that. But now it's a little cheaper and you can get it and then boom, your phone. My first Disney cruise was a seven-nighter. I had a very stressful project management job. I couldn't put my phone down. I was like, and people would not respect my time. You know, if I were on vacation anywhere, I know you're on vacation. I'm sorry to bother you, but do you know where this file is? You know, whatever. Right. so that was the thing where I was like, I put my phone in a drawer on the day I boarded. It was turned off, and I didn't turn my phone back on for a week. And I thought that was incredible. That is incredible. That was incredible. And uh, it's hard to find vacations where you can do that. And most people don't have the discipline to actually, if they have internet, to, to not use it, right? Right. And my last cruise with Tom, um, we went. my last Disney cruise was with Tom on The Wish. And we bought an internet package because we were... Working. Working. But, I mean, I had my phone out the whole time. Same thing with this Royal Caribbean thing. My internet was pretty cheap. I was like, oh, why not? You know, and Lee's like, there he goes with his phone. It's true. I I would love to just leave it in a drawer and turn it off. And I wish I had better discipline when it came to that. I think um, the nature of our job, and with older jobs, it would probably be easier for me to. With this job, it's very difficult, right? Because right. we are constantly... Breaking the Disney news. Yeah, breaking the news and doing all that stuff and... People constantly need help with something or, or, or. And so to go on a cruise and turn off your phone, I think is like just such a, such a blessing if you're able to take advantage. But then how are you going to know if somebody steals a cucumber off of living with the land? That is a story that broke on my watch. (laughs) And it was a Sunday night and it was at, I was at my house. I was having a barbecue. We're having a cookout. Um, and several people that work for the company were at my house. Tom was in Paris. Uh, people that watch the podcast have heard this before. Tom's in Paris. It's 8 p. I don't know what time it is. Uh, it's, I think we're, it's about 8 p.m. local time in Orlando. This story breaks, and it's hilarious. Someone sent it to us on social media, and they're like, here's my video. You can use it. So uh, Jill is there. Jill had much more experience at the time of getting something into WordPress and getting it published. So I'm yeah. like, Jill, help. So she does that. 
gets the story created, we pump it out. Um, and so instead of watching page views on a website, I was watching the guy who sent us the video as watching his Instagram account mm-hmm. for views of the video. And like 10 minutes later, it was at 35,000 views. Wow. And like a half hour later, it was at like 110,000 views. Oh so I'm gosh. just watching. The, it was going crazy. And so I'm watching all this. So the website was blowing up. And um, I get a text from Tom at like 3 a.m. 3 in the morning. Yeah. Why did everyone beat us to this story about the cucumber? And I'm like, they, they didn't, Tom. We were first with that. Our website is blowing up. Things are going great. And um, I explain it to him, and he's, like, still wiping the sleep out of his eyes, I guess. And he goes, oh, I think my, I think the timestamps are off on this phone. You know how I get. <laughs> and, like, he was, like, yelling at us for publishing, like, the biggest story of the, the it was not the biggest news of the year, but it probably was the biggest social in terms of like interaction and uh, page views and all that. The biggest story of the year for us. Yeah. Uh, that is not a bougie experience getting a cucumber <laughs> off of the land. Um, so we can get back to bougie experiences. Okay. I want to finish up your talking about the Star Cruiser. I want to know how you um, styled yourself. What oh. you did to enjoy the experience and how did you role play and all that kind of stuff? Of course stuff. I did. Yeah. I know you well enough. Uh, as, as I mentioned, I'm a huge Kylo Ren fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, therefore, I was aligned with the First Order. I had bought the hat at, uh, you know, that store there next to Kylo's ship ahead of going on. Um, I had, you know, my full gray outfit with the cape and everything, pretending like I was an officer with the First Order. Uh, you know, in the evening time when it came Impersonating to Impersonating get... an officer is a very serious <laughs> offense. Well, first order officer. Yeah. Yeah. In the evening time, uh, I think when I watched the show Andor and I saw Mon Mothma's outfits, I was like, that, if I lived in Star Wars, I'd want that outfit. Yeah. And so when I got to have my Star Wars experience, I was like, I am buying some Mon Mothma outfits. So that's what I did. Can I, I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but because I know other people that really like Kylo Ren that are women, mm-hmm. is it an Adam Driver thing? I feel like it is specifically Kylo um, because when I first— But isn't he kind of like emo and yeah, when I When I first watched The Force Awakens, I was like, oh, not into this guy. But when I saw The Last Jedi, maybe it's just because he had a shirt off in The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um it felt like, so my favorite, uh, you know, book of all time is probably Pride and Prejudice. I felt like yeah. it was very, he was Mr. Darcy and Ray okay. was uh, Elizabeth Bennett. Um, I know. I I don't think she'll get mad at me for saying this. I know, like, Lee and I went on Rise of the Resistance with Jill. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jill really likes Kylo Ren. She likes Adam Driver. Yeah. And when Kylo Ren says, you have something I want, and I will take it free from you, she's like, oh, swoon. And I'm like, all of this is very problematic in the context that you are putting it. I mean. I feel like it's sending a bad message. I might have said something like, yeah, I do, the first yeah. time I went on that ride. <laughs> Adam Driver was a U.S. Marine. Yeah. He, uh, I think he got hurt and um, and got discharged for medical reasons, but he— he was a, a, a United States Marine and ended up, uh, you, what do you know, trying out this acting thing yeah. and it worked out for him. I liked him in uh, House of Gucci, too. House of, well, there's another bougie thing we can talk yeah. about. Because Disney has started doing uh, this thing where they partner with designer brands to create yeah. Disney merchandise. So, uh, for instance, on the lower end of that scale would be something like Dooney and Burke, which... To me, is still a, a very expensive bag, but not when you compare it to some of these other things right. that we're seeing. So, uh, Dooney. Um, you see uh, Coach. Coach. Gucci. Even Bobble Bar. Is that a luxury brand? I don't know. Mm. Those stuff is ex- the stuff is expensive. It's not like a Cartier. <laughs> no. Um, they have uh, Gucci, though. Yeah. One I- of the... I want to say... I might get Gucci confused with Chanel or one of these other designers. I don't know. I know, like, the brands that Lee likes. Lee wants a Chanel suit, and she wants 
um, Louboutin shoes, right, with the red With the red bottoms. bottoms, right? I wore that when I was Chelsea Chapek. Oh, look at you go. Um, I told Lee, like, Home Depot has a great selection of spray paint. I think you can buy the Louboutin um, red paint at yeah. Michael's. Oh, really? Yeah. Like you, Man. you might have just, you might have just saved Christmas for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was a vlogger, and I, I'm not sure about this. I've just heard, like, second, third hand. There, um, I think it might have been Tim Tracker bought... Like on live on, on his uh, video, like a Gucci Disney sweater. Did he? Yes, it was like was there was a blue. Now I know exactly. Sweater, what and then Easy Josh bought about. one just Did to he? buy it, just because, <laughs> like, kind of as a joke. The, I'm like, I wish I could buy three thousand dollar jokes or however much a Gucci right? Mickey sweater costs. So I, I am not above you know, paying for a Gucci purse. At that price point, I might be willing to do it. I don't think I'd be willing to do it with a Mickey Mouse on it. A yeah. canvas Gucci purse with Mickey all over it for $5,000 or however much they're selling it for. Maybe if I'm if I'm going to buy a Gucci purse, it's probably going to be like, you know, leather, something more mm -hmm. that I can wear with everyday outfits. I, I, I can't hope. imagine paying the prices I, uh, I don't understand the handbag thing <laughs> um, I have a friend who bought some I think it was coach stuff uh, a ca friend is a cast member his wife got it at cast connection yeah. for like a huge discount well the coach stuff already you're talking hundreds of dollars yeah. versus thousands, thousands of dollars that's like I think when I went on that Royal Caribbean cruise they were selling um, Louis Vuitton bags but they are like recycled Louis Vuitton bags, and they're still so thousands loved. of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got into it with Lee. We have a couple little little things that we'll dig at each other on. So mine is like, if I had a bag, and it was Nike yeah. or Polo or some other brand, and the bag was just like 100 Nike logos all over it, you would yeah. say it was tacky and trashy. But somehow Louis Vuitton gets away with it <laughs> where you can just put your stupid logo 150 times on a bag and women swoon, and I don't get it. It's a, I guess it's a classier looking logo. And it, also it's like a brown on brown, so it's not like it's so in your face. Um, I only have one of those, and it was a gift. But I think that came out sexist that women go. I think uh, men might do it too. That's another reason why I wouldn't buy the Gucci Mickey Mouse stuff. Is it was because ugly. Because it it was not cute. It yeah. it's the Gucci logo all over the place with tiny Mickey Mouses on it, and I'm like, not not worth the price. And the T-shirts even, it's like a a neon pink T-shirt with a giant Mickey Mouse and Gucci just written. Giant on the shirt. Not uh, not my personal style. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay two thousand dollars for a T-shirt with Mickey on it just because it says Gucci. I think if something was like actually really stylish, it it wouldn't need the logo, right? right. So I understand like the Louboutin shoes. Everybody knows because they see the bottom of them. They have a right. distinctive thing, and that is some sort of status symbol. But I think if it's really classy, you don't need. The logo, so, like, I would want to buy it because it's beautiful and it makes me feel good. And some people, maybe just the brand makes them feel good. But, like, I think, um, what was that show? Um, I just drew a blank. Succession. Mm -hmm. They're billionaires. And there was this whole thing about the way they dress is, I forget exactly what the term is, but basically Quiet people. luxury. Yeah, people who are really rich. Don't flaunt the logos of yeah. their stuff. They're just wearing I'm, nice stuff that's that you don't know that it's right. super expensive, so but like it is. A Gucci horse bit. No logos on it. Mm -hmm. Same price probably as that Mickey Mouse one. But it you know, the old money aesthetic would be mm -hmm. something that it's only if you know you know. Yeah, because it's different like um I the bag thing in particular drives me crazy, right? Because it's there's only so much like higher quality that you're getting from this. Right. It's mostly just to flex on people, right? right? Is why people get this. The um, the uh, is it Hermes that makes the Birkin bag? Hermes, yes. And Hermes. you have to spend like ten thousand dollars. And then they try to, to even... make you like buy something to be able to have the yes. right to buy it, right? You have to buy like a whole bunch of plates and scarves and stuff before you're even offered the opportunity to buy the Birkin or the Kelly or another Hermes bag. Um, but if going back to is Disney, is there Disney Hermes stuff? 
I don't think there's any Disney Hermes stuff. I think um, Disney does stuff with Gucci. They do stuff with Coach. But if I was going to do, like, a designer Disney bag, I would go the Kate Spade route because it is um, classier. It's basically just a black leather purse with, like, ears on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's more and affordable. The, to yeah. Kate Spade is much more affordable much than, more affordable. than it's, it's Louis more, Vuitton yeah, or Yeah, it's more of a mid-range yeah. than a... It's more like, um, it's more closer to a Dooney yeah. than... And I, I just think it looks classier, and I would, you know, it's not just about the money. If the Gucci bag and the Kate Spade bag were priced exactly the same, I'd still rather get the Kate Spade bag just because it looks classier. I saw a woman in the airport, um, and she had um, a number of bags, luggage that was probably, I assume, was expensive. It was a light shade of brown, mm -hmm. very light, like baseball glove looking, yeah. you know, leather. Um, and it all matched, and each piece had a plastic <laughs> cover that was designed specifically to go over that to protect right. the look. And I think doesn't that just defeat the purpose right. of luggage? Yeah, like luggage that you have luggage that's there to protect your stuff that you have to protect the luggage. Like, isn't that going too far? Yeah, it's like it reminds me of uh, when my grandmother had a nice couch that she put the plastic on top of. Well, oh, your yeah. couch doesn't look so classy. When you've got the plastic on top of it. My grandmother also had plastic running down the hallway on the carpet. Really? Yeah, like to not mess up the carpet. Okay, I've never seen that before. And my grandma would kind of clean up behind you, like as you, like she was just very, that was a thing for yeah. for her era, I guess. And um, well, Lee's going to kill me for saying this. One of the debates we have is she'll be like, we have a glass shower. So she's like, can you squeeze you the shower every time you're done? I of course. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. She's like, it's just that, you know, once you let things build up, it takes longer to clean it. I agree. Oh, okay. And then, and then, like, she walked in front of me in the living room, and I was like, excuse me, can you please vacuum behind yourself when you walk through <laughs> here? The dirt tends to build up. <laughs> she got really mad. And somehow they're not the same thing. Just don't wear shoes in the house. Yeah. Well, she wasn't wearing shoes, but you still, you know, your dirty feet, come on. I don't know. Are you saying Lee has dirty feet? No, I'm just, <laughs> it's just something for me to like go back at her with, right? Can you? No, you need to squeegee the shower every time. I'm going to, I'm on the I do. Side with I've, this. I've started doing it. I don't always spray vinegar on it because I feel weird standing there naked in a glass shower, like yeah. squeegeeing so, it to begin with. Uh, my, my kids, my, somebody asked me the other day, oh, do you, do you let your kids play with any toys in the shower? I'm like, you know what's the best toy? Is this, is this magic wand that you put vinegar and Dawn dish soap inside of, and then they get to color all over the shower doors with it? Oh, my gosh, so much fun. I play it up for the kids so they think it's, like, the greatest thing ever. I used to have – I've never – I haven't seen this recently. Fifteen years ago, I had – a thing that hung in my shower was like scrubbing bubble. Remember scrubbing bubbles? Yeah. And basically, when you get out, you hit a button, and it would like count to ten, and then it would spin well, around and spray like, like, like a spot free rinse of scrubbing bubbles around your shower. I don't know what happened to them. Maybe they're un deemed I unsafe or something. Maybe they seems exist. like a good idea. Seems like a great idea. Uh, that is bougie. I mean, I guess if you're truly bougie, you just have someone That's squeeze you the shower for you. <laughs> Um, tell me some more bougie. Di I know you want. I know you came armed with all kinds of d bougie Disney experiences. For uh, I I have also done a VIP tour. I think um, I th thankfully did not have to pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. I had an aunt who came to town with all of her friends from California. Um, she paid for it, and it was a group of I think ten of us. I I want to say the VIP tours are around six thousand dollars. So if you there's like an hourly rate per person. It, it can be, yeah. So, you know, if you break Actually, it down. Actually, Be Our Guest Vacations can help <laughs> you schedule that. Yes. Now, they can book those unforgettable VIP vacations. Go to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT. Uh, we have friends visiting us uh, right now, and they have never been to Disney before. And I was telling them about the VIP tour, um, saying, you know, how much fun I had and how it was worth. And they're like, okay, let's book it. And I'm like, well... You can't book it today to go today. <laughs> and also it's $6,000. Um, 
That's so a lot at, of money. At which point they were like, "You could stay. You could get two <laughs> nights on the Star Cruiser for that." I know. Um, at which point they're like, "Oh, okay, never mind." But really, when you break it down, if you have ten people and you all pitch in six hundred bucks, it I think that is worth it. Um, I think it depends. So I've been. Uh, let's talk about the VIP tour. What you get essentially is. Um, a, a guide will pick you up in a private vehicle mm-hmm. um, from a predetermined spot, and they'll take you um, in the back entrance of yep. your chosen park um, and 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 to any other park you choose to go to that day. So you're in this nice van. You got cold bottles of water. Uh, these guides who are very nice and professional and know the, know things very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you will park. So at Magic Kingdom, you kind of park behind Main Street. Yep. Uh, at Hollywood Studios, you park uh, kind of behind the behind, Tower of Terror. Yep. Like that area by Lightning McQueen's by Lightning McQueen, uh, yeah. Racing Academy. Uh, at Epcot, you park kind of behind, uh, there's a few areas, but you park kind of we park behind, behind Test Track. track. Yeah. Uh, and you get walked in. Um, and then I, d- there I think two different places. There's we, two spots at Animal Kingdom. At Animal Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah. So one was behind Dinosaur, and the other one was behind Flight of Passage. Right. So these people then will, uh, in addition to walking you to the front of any the line of any attraction you want to ride, basically, uh, also give you um, snacks throughout yep. the day. They'll have snacks, free um, free snacks, free. ice cream bars. Well, they're included <laughs> in, included snacks for six thousand dollars. You better eat them because you're just losing money if you don't. Oh. That's how we felt. We were eating Mm -hmm. every single time we got in the car just because it's like, well, we got to get our money's worth. But it was not just um, it was not just Mickey bars and and uh, bottles of water. Right. You they also I remember, um, you know, a tray that's kind of like you might have a flight attendant present you that has maybe granola bars and M&Ms and Skittles and some of these things. Mickey Mouse shaped uh, Rice Krispie treat. Right. Yeah, so all that stuff is on the table. Um, you also get uh, they'll they'll park hop you to wherever you want to go, and they will get you preferred viewing for like happily ever after, where you get in your spot, you get settled, then they disappear and they'll come back with ice cream. Oh, throughout the day, what happens is these you'll you'll maybe go ride something, and when you get out, they're waiting for you yes. with bottles of water or mm-hmm. with ice cream with a snack or something. They're wonderful. They are. Uh, they do. They'll push your child in a stroller. Uh, they will. I did not have my kids with me that day. No, that was a but they will if you day. have them. Um, and then they will, you know, help you with your any reservations that you had that day. To make sure that you get to your reservation on time, and you know, for uh, uh, your lunch or dinner. Uh, it's really a wonderful experience. It, it is. is very expensive. I have, n- I've never paid for it, but I have been fortunate enough to be on. Um, a number of VIP tours. Oh, look at so, you. I thought um, I was bougie only going to one. No, I've been on a number of them. My favorite was for the Epcot 40 event that we had here at WWNT. Um, we took uh, a famous Imagineer, Tim Delaney, in our group with us. Oh. And so I got to ride um, Flight of Passage. I'm sorry. I got to ride uh, Cosmic Rewind with him when he had never been on it. That's uh, awesome. Also, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. Uh, he had never been on that. Uh, there were, I think, a couple things he had not done yet that yeah. we did with him and got to experience them with uh, a legendary Imagineer. So yeah. that was an incredible experience. Um, in that case, so um, full disclosure, bougie experience, disclaimer, um, that was with a Club 33. Club 33 members are entitled mm-hmm. to a certain amount of tours, uh, yeah. and that was with Club 33 member. So we also spent time in Club 33 and all that. Oh. And, uh, so Club 33. That's on my bucket list. Yeah, you've never been to any of them? No. My, so my aunt who came from California, she's on the waiting list for Club mm-hmm. 33 right now. Yeah. So. It is uh, really, it's really great. Club 33 is really nice. The um, I have actually not been to the one at Animal Kingdom. Which is probably the one it that most looks, people see because yeah. it's obvious that it's Club 33 right there. Um, really, the Magic Kingdom one, you kind of have to be looking for it or someone, you have to kind of know where it is, yeah. which is right there by the Adventureland Bridge. Right. Uh, that one, the downstairs, there's a bar. I've been to that one a few times. The downstairs bar is like the Nautilus. Oh. Uh, and then on the left, there's another bar downstairs that is like the, the Captain's Quarters. It's a bar. Uh, and then upstairs is kind of more like... Kind of like the Grand Floridian and or something. There's thought, a balcony where you can stand and You look thought at, you wouldn't be able to participate in this bougie discussion. And look at you 
multiple well, VIP I am tours. Un, I, I do not have the Club means to, to acquire these bougie experiences on my own. Luckily, I know people that are nice. Um, the Club 33 at Epcot is fantastic. It's above the American Adventure. It's, um, it's kind of like a luxury ocean liner. Mm-hmm. A lot of like dark wood and chrome and kind of this this um, Art Deco feel to it. It's, it's it's one of the biggest. It's probably the biggest one. I don't. I haven't been in Animal Kingdom. Uh, Hollywood Studios is the old Catwalk Bar. So if you ever went to the old Catwalk Bar, it's up there, but they've walled it off, and it's very much like a um, mid-century modern Mad Men type of aesthetic up there. So which one's your favorite? Um, Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Magic Kingdom. Um, I don't know. I, I like them all. Have you been to the I, one in California? Uh, yes. And I, how does that one compare? Uh, so I've not been in the bar at that one. I've been I've eaten in a restaurant. So basically, if you know someone, um, they can say, "I've booked you for dinner." I don't take this as gospel. This is the way that I think it worked. Our hookup knew somebody, and they booked our dinner. And we were able to go eat dinner without the member present. Oh. Okay. You can eat dinner. It's wonderful. I had really, Tom, I think Tom was like, eh, it's okay. I thought it was wonderful. I I had a great meal there. And it's really cool because there's a lot of history there and all that kind of stuff. And you go in. There's there's cool stuff to look at when you get there. And you can shop and buy some cool stuff. Although most of the cool stuff Lee wanted was sold out. I got a few cool things. Um, But they have a bar there, but you have to be with the member to go. We didn't have the member with us, so we didn't get Mm -hmm. to go in that bar. But it looks really cool. Looks really cool. Got some cool merchandise, and cool stories to tell. I think if you have an opportunity, I think most Disney people would say, you know, yeah. most Disney people would be interested in doing yeah. that. And I've been very fortunate to um, get to experience some of that, and it is uh, a wonderful thing to experience. The club treats you very nice. And so, if you had the money, would you try to get on the list for Club Thirty Three? If I had the money, yeah. I mean, if I had just had money to light on fire, <laughs> it's not cheap, but you get cool perks. Yeah. There are some cool perks. You can probably you can Google those perks. There's a, you get some uh, like passes. You get those passes do have uh, essentially lightning lane mm-hmm. attached to them. I think up to 16 lightning lanes a day, and you get um, some VIP tours, and you get um, some cool access to certain events. There was a time when the club was closing very early in the day, so members were. To keep the members from getting upset at Magic Kingdom, they're like, okay, so the club closes early, but we have a private fireworks viewing area for a limited time. So they had a, a private area for a while that they could watch fireworks, stuff like that. And um, I know that Club 33 gets certain perks. What about um, Golden Oak? So Do they get different perks or like what would be the benefit to being a member of both or do you really only need one? Uh so Golden Oak, I imagine Club 33 membership is not included in Golden Oak. Right. right? So it's separate. They're separate things. Golden Oak, my understanding is, um, f- first of all, the houses in there are very expensive and becoming more and more expensive. Yeah. Um, but the all of Golden Oak is um, kind of run through their memberships and stuff. So you have, I think, concierge, uh, a number of annual passes, the ability to have holiday services, decorate your house. Uh, I think you can use some of Disney's food services for catering and things like that if you have parties. This could have changed. This could be incorrect information. I want to know what that HOA fee is like. Uh, it's very expensive. <laughs> uh, but if you actually want to join the golf club, it is extremely Expensive. Oh. And so that's run through, I think that's run through four seasons. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at, when I talked to someone, uh, they were like, oh yeah, I looked into this and it is, it's someone who can afford nice things. And um, they're like, no, it is, it is like, what in the world is this expensive? (laughs) It is like, um, like the cost of a, a luxury car per year. Wow. Um, just for the golf privileges. Wow. So, um, do you get a golf cart? I don't think so. I think you have to use theirs. I don't know. If you want a golf cart, go to Fort Wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> just seems like for those prices, if you could get a car, why not get a golf cart along with it? I don't know. I assume they probably can if they want to. Like, my dad lives in a subdivision where you can have your own golf cart. It just has to be black, it has to meet certain oh. appearance have- standards and certain age and. All that kind of stuff. I we don't, have a lot of golf carts in our neighborhood, but I don't think there's any uh, stipulations. I see white golf carts, black golf carts. I mm-hmm. think I've seen a red golf cart. Yeah. You know. 
Um, Fort Wilderness, I've rented their golf carts. There are also other places that um, you're allowed to rent golf carts from that will bring them to Fort Wilderness that have really cool golf, like lifted golf carts with yeah. boom, like music bars and lighting, LED lights and all kinds of, you can get all kinds of cool stuff if you, if you look for it. But I've always wanted a golf cart. Yeah. I've never lived on a golf course, but I've always wanted, I, I did live on a golf course once, but it was like, not the kind of, I don't know. It, I was renting a house that was on a golf yeah. course that I'm didn't not, seem to be like a golf course community. I'm How's not that? on the golf course, but I'm like within walking distance of it. That's cool. Yeah. I used to play golf a lot. I would have been jealous. Old me would have been jealous. I mean, I'm jealous now to for people that have time to play golf. Like I used to, my old job and before, often the company, the leadership team, uh, the CEO, COO, and then I was the next one down, um, would, well, I wasn't the next one down necessarily, but I kind of, yeah, kind of was. Um, Friday afternoon, let's go. Hit the golf, hit the links, right? And then we would play on Saturday and probably on Sunday. So there were times in my life when I was golfing three days a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, and uh, that was a great hobby. That's a very bougie hobby. <laughs> it could be a very expensive Hobby. I don't know. Like, I used to think, like, oh, golf's got to be one of the most expensive hobbies until I found out about, like, what parents are paying for their kids to play travel hockey where you yeah. got to buy a million pads and skates and all that stuff. Or uh, skiing is a ridiculously expensive hobby. Yeah. Uh, anybody who wants to become a Formula One driver or any kind of car racing, uh. they're... They're just, like, lapping the field, literally. I literally looked into it today about getting my kids into golf go-karting. Is it crazy? It's not that crazy at, like, the three-year-old age, but uh, that would be not buying my own cart. That would be, you know, just using the cart that they have. I mean, Lewis Hamilton, I don't know a lot about racing, but he's probably one of the greatest F1 drivers that ever lived. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they said, I'm a Max Verstappen girl myself. Oh, no, I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> um, but he, um, Lewis Hamilton, like, he and his dad were like, his dad would work all week, and then they'd work on the car in the garage, and he'd go take them on the week, weekends to race, and he had a car that was kind of cobbled together out of spare parts that they would fix, and he would just beat everyone because he was good. Yeah. I have thoughts you know on I mean? Lewis Hamilton right now. What's that? I have thoughts on Lewis Hamilton. I like Lewis Hamilton. Well, I saw... Pictures I, of him at Super Nintendo World. I'm just, I'm a, I don't think he should be moving to Ferrari, but that's another, another story. I don't, I I'm not bougie enough. Like, <laughs> I assume this is because you went to Monte Carlo to watch a, uh, or I'm sorry, to Monaco. Uh, well, Red Bull's got a big mess of their own that we could talk about <laughs> offline about uh, Christian Horner, who is married to one of the Spice Girls. Yes. And uh, he's been up to some not cool stuff. Lots of people are married to like, I, this news, Nelson Peltz, the Disney board thing, his daughter's married to David Beckham's son. He's married to Spice Girls are, are like, by extension all over the news, right? Yeah. I think uh, Scary Spice ha has a book out where she's talking about some bad this stuff, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. Nelson Peltz thing, just to touch on something because it's newsworthy, uh, at this Disney board fight. There was someone in New York talked about that he he ruined someone's small business like whoever their wedding planner is he bullied them and like oh. and like made their lives horrible and whatever and Nelson Peltz um forever the the great PR man that he is was quoted as saying what good is being a billionaire if you can't bully people <laughs> <laughs> I mean okay <laughs> I mean I think there was a there was a quote that I've heard before of I might, I might have heard it on the show Billions, too, which is, what good is having FU money if you don't get to tell someone FU every now and then? So, I mean, okay. I guess that's the attitude you take at that point. I think, like, you've got a few billion dollars. You're 81 years old. Why do you want to be on this board? Because you want to you win, right? Yeah. I guess. Maybe you should own an F1 team. <laughs> Maybe you can help Desi get her kids into F1. Yeah, it's like... Uh... Lawrence Stroll owns, a, I think, yeah. the... The best way to become an F1 driver is for your dad to buy an F1 team. That's right. Mm. Um, we're way off track. I never <laughs> in my Sorry. dreams thought that I... I'm a big I, F1 fan. I used to be in... Like, when Drive to Survive season, season 1 came out, then I got really into F1 for, like, two or three years. Plus, I, at the time, I drove a Mercedes, so I was like, oh, I'm going to... I root for the Mercedes team and all that kind of stuff. That's why and, you're a Lewis Hamilton fan. 
Uh, yeah, well, I just like him. I think he's a very skilled driver, and he's great. And I've never liked Max Verstappen. I thought he was a spoiled brat. It, well, I mean, is. really, my driver is Daniel Ricciardo. He's funny. But, he's the best personality on yeah. NF1. Uh, just hasn't been a great driver lately. Oh, no. It makes me Poor sad. Poor Dan. Anyway, <laughs> we couldn't have possibly gotten further <laughs> off track, no pun intended, than this. But uh, F1 would be a bougie experience. I wish they still had the uh, Richard Petty driving experience. I never did. Got you to ever do that? That was no. a problem. That was a very expensive Disney. No, because um, they took that away when I was in my early twenties. So it was yeah. before I could have afforded it theoretically. Did you ever? And do it was it? Very, no, I never did it. It um, looked cool. Yeah, I think it's probably pretty cool. It's probably pretty cool, and that, that was uh, certainly not um, when you look at it like from a. Who is doing this, like, bougie experience, right? These are, I think, like, American, like, NASCAR racing probably appeals more to, like, a blue-collar type right. person. But it's certainly a very expensive splurge that you could go do if you wanted to drive uh, an, a real race car, which I think that could have been on our list, but it wasn't. Oh, wow. Um, so VIP tours, yes. yes. Those are very bougie. And yes. VIP tours are connected to Formula One now. <laughs> Apparently. Give me some more, Desi. I know that you like these finer things and these bougie experiences. Um, another thing that would be on my bucket list that I haven't been able to do yet is Victorian Alberts. Have yeah. you done Victorian Alberts? Uh, so, no, I have not done Victorian Alberts. We discussed on a previous episode, Grand Floridian is the giant hole in my Disney dining. I've eaten at Grand Floridian Cafe a number of times. I've never eaten at 1900 Park Fair. You have Never haven't? eaten at Narcoosie's. You, never eaten at Citric Coast. Never eaten at Flagler's when it was a thing. I've been to uh, Gasparilla Grill. I've never been to Victorian Alberts. Like, so I have not been to Victorian Alberts, and I haven't done, uh, what's the Beauty and the Beast? Bar. Uh, yeah, the Beauty and the Beast restaurant. Now, what's the what's the bar? Oh, the Enchanted, Enchanted Rose. Enchanted Rose. Been to Encha- okay, I thought so you were, I thought you were talking about Be Our Guest. I was like, No, I've been to Be Our Guest. Of course you have. You have kids. I've been to Be Our Guest, and I've I, I've never been. To, look, my Disney experience most of my life was I've said this on the podcast before. When I was young, eating sandwiches out of a cooler in the Magic Kingdom parking lot during lunch, right? And uh, and splurt, you have spend twenty bucks a day or something like that. Yeah, uh, and then. A lot of Epcot dining, right? I ate at uh, Beer, Gar- Beer Garden, still one of my favorite restaurants on property. Um, but Not no, the, bougie, the, the fancy stuff I didn't do until the last several years. And so, um, so Enchanted Rose is fine. But Victorian Alberts is a. Somebody said in our comments, mm-hmm. I was reading uh, comments on, a, on one of our YouTube videos. I don't even remember what it was. And they said. The last time I went to Victorian Alberts will be the last time. It was a oh, terrible really? experience, and it was our 22nd time dining there. They've eaten there 22 times. Oh, my gosh. That is a Chef's lot of table? bougie. I don't know. I did, they didn't specify, but I thought that is pretty impressive. I feel like if That's I'm— That's a pretty big flex. If I'm going to do Victorian Alberts, I'm going to do the chef's table. I'm, I'm just going yeah. all in on it. Um, someone told me that— um, um, Paging Mr. Morrow did a Victorian Alberts thing, and that uh, Sean, um, who Sean actually worked for us a very long time ago doing social media, uh, but Sean works with him now, uh, and that he strolled in wearing a, a top hat, like tuxedo with tails and a top hat and a cane to Victorian <laughs> Alberts. <laughs> Which wow. I think that sounds hilarious. I didn't look on Facebook to see if Sean posted a picture of it, but I did hear that that happened. Oh my that God. That's a thing. That's amazing. Yeah, but. Um, I feel like that experience would be wasted on me because I'm more of a meat and potatoes person, and I might not appreciate, like, an adventurous culinary journey. Yeah. Well, I mean, my husband and I don't really eat seafood, so hopefully they would have some meat and potatoes. I don't eat seafood as a general, like, it's not like I won't eat seafood. It's just if I go out to a restaurant that has a bunch of stuff and some seafood, I'm probably going to eat something from the a bunch of stuff menu before right. I'm going to eat from the seafood menu. Uh, exception would be like shrimp and pasta or something like that. Like shrimp, yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't often order fish. But the fish that we had at Mama Melrose's was one of the best things that was on oh. that menu. So we are talking grouper. about Mama Melrose. Yeah. What do you know? <laughs> We're back because that's a bougie experience going to Mama Melrose's. Um, no, Victorian Alberts. Um, the way it was explained to me the first time that I did book a reservation there back in like the early mid uh, early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, I the way that it was explained to me then was essentially. 
you don't make choices there. It's just like, here's what you're going to be having today. Right. And you're going to have, you know, 27 courses of this, that, a bite of this, a smidge of that, a pinch of something else. Mm-hmm. And that made me very nervous thinking that I have no control over what I'm going to be eating. Some people love that. Yeah. Some people would love nothing more than to have a very well-trained, competent chef choose their meal for them. It's just not me. I'm... Because a lot of things other people really like, I don't really like. So you're more of a Le Cellier kind of guy. I do like Le Cellier. It's pretty good. Um, I've had I've had forgettable experiences there, and I've had very yeah. good experiences. I will say, I've said this before, um, the best steak I've had on Disney property uh, was probably at Flying Fish. Really? I also really like, if you, okay, here's a bougie experience. Okay. Kappa. On the roof of the Four Seasons mm-hmm. in Golden Oak. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the only restaurant on Disney property with a Michelin star. Might be the only restaurant in Orlando with a Michelin star. Um, I don't know if they bought that, right? I don't know that it's actually like so much better than the other places. I had a very good steak there, but their, their right. menu in general is very good. They have a, a it's a rooftop restaurant, so you're on the roof of the Four Seasons. You get there at the right time, you can see fireworks, you can see all that kind of stuff. After ten. Um, this isn't necessarily an exclusive bougie experience, and I'm not positive they still do it. But when I went, what they told us was after 10, you can smoke cigars on the rooftop like lounge, which is kind of a enjoyable, relaxing thing to make you feel that you're high above the hoi polloi, smoking $40 cigars on the roof of the Four Seasons. Yeah, I not, can see where that would at least make you feel like you're important. I'm not a cigar smoker myself, but that sounds like a fun experience. I think you, even if it even if you don't smoke cigars, it sounds like the image is, you know, the image is nice. You feel like Mark Twain at the end of American <laughs> Adventure up there in the torch of the Statue of Liberty smoking his cigar, right? Yeah. Surveying uh, your domain below. Yeah. Hopefully your hand doesn't fall off or whatever happened to him recently. Yeah. What was it? The, yeah, his, uh, his face head, got no. His, his head, head was turned. So the his wrong head way. got turned sideways, and so we sometimes argue. Um, oh, someone in the Wigs uh, Discord posted a picture of Sean in his tuxedo with the with the uh, top hat. Oh, um, nice. So I don't I don't watch a lot of this stuff, but someone looks, told me about this. He looks very Mr. Peanut. He does look kind of like the Monopoly Man or something. Mr. Peanut's a good one too. Um, what were we just talking about? Cigars. Cigars. Oh, the so Mark Twain and Ratron. So we often debate like, was that the best headline? Because no, it doesn't matter what you do. Everyone and everybody on the internet is going to say it's clickbait, clickbait if they don't yeah. like a headline. So I can say, ro- uh, roller coaster burns down at Magic Kingdom, and it really did burn down. But someone's going to be mad that they found out it was. The Barnstormer and not Space Mountain and call it clickbait, right? So the idea, though, is you are paying people to gather news and you want people to read those stories because that's how you pay your staff and how you right. pay for your building where you record and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the discussion was that someone on our staff was very conservative with the headline. Mm-hmm. They basically said Mark Twain animatronic malfunctions at Epcot. Mm-hmm. And I'm Click looking bait. at it and going, um, how about Mark Twain animatronic is smoking a cigar out of his ear, <laughs> which is what was happening. His face was turned completely right. sideways, and he's holding <laughs> the cigar up to his ear, and that cigar kind of lights up. Like, right. you could tell it's, like, smoking. I'm like, that would be a better headline, but someone thought that was too outlandish. It was too outlandish. So, you know, I don't, they don't let me write titles very often around here when, when they do, you know. I wrote the the famous journey into inebriation when I got <laughs> drunk and kicked out of Epcot. That was my, my work. That's, That's clever. I at least That's make cute. them fun. I don't try to deceive people. I don't want to deceive people. Yeah. There are people that deceive, whose entire like website is deceitful headlines. Um, I don't want to do that. We have a lot of new Peter Pan merchandise flying into stock. or uh, lots Yeah, of- I, don't, I don't love that. I'll, I'll just be candid. Um, I don't love, here's a character, what's a verb associated with them, right. and then they fly into this, or yeah. they roar, the Simba roars into yeah. here, or, Tia. I don't love it, but also when you're the one that has to write that, you're like, man, I'm, 
work with me here. I'm kind of out of ideas. I just want to get this story out. I get it. New Tiana merchandise cooking at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Tiana's cooking up some new merchandise. I had, I, I think I said this on the last podcast. There were a bunch of new props that showed up in Frontierland. There was, um, basically, it's next to the train station. There's boxes. crates. like yeah. uh, There's guns and and whiskey and all this stuff. And it, one of the boxes said humidor, so I thought, like, oh, cigar. So I was like, my headline, I was editor that morning because someone was sick. And I was like, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms showed up <laughs> in Magic Kingdom. But Wait. then I found out that the humidor was leather. It wasn't alcohol. Oh. It wasn't tobacco. So I was like, ah, oh, ruin my headline. Oh. Ruin my, oh, well. Said ATM. There's only so much enjoyment I get <laughs> on a, being pressed into service on a Saturday morning when someone's sick. ATF invades Magic Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, on the bougie scale, where are we now? Are we still low? And is Victoria and Albert's the ultimate bougie dining I mean, experience dining at Disney? Wise. Oh, Takumi Te. Takumi Te. I feel like Takumi Te is on par, probably. It has a dress code. Price-wise right? with Victoria and Albert's, too, Takumi right? Takumi Te and Victoria and Albert's and Narcusi's all have a dress code. Because the guy hit the cast That's member right. at Narcusi's for he tried to telling him he couldn't wear, suit. like, bathing suit and T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, you know. And that guy runs a hotel himself. Shockingly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, as they would say on Letterkenny. Yeah. You wouldn't know. You would only know about that from recent visits to Canada because before that, your husband had never been to Canada and didn't know <laughs> anything about hockey or Letterkenny. I, so... I have heard wonderful things about Takumi Te, to be honest. I I feel like I have heard more people being disappointed with Victorian Alberts. Maybe it's just because the, it's built up so much in their head that when they go, yeah. they're kind of disappointed. Versus yeah. Takumi Te, I don't know of anybody who's been and been like, I hated it. No. In fact, it's out of my mind if I... I know that we've had Kumites at Disney <laughs> where people fight on the... On the ferry boats, but uh, Takumite, I forgot. I forget about it. Yeah, and uh, I think it's the only. I'm, I might be wrong. It, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head of an in park restaurant that has a dress code. Monsieur Paul. Does Monsieur Paul have a dress code? I I feel like Maybe. it's it's definitely fancier. I'm only eating downstairs with the commoners. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I forgot about that. So Epcot. Then the restaurants at Epcot I have not dined in. Coral Reef, never been there. Okay. Uh, Monsieur Paul. Monsieur Paul. Monsieur Paul. Monsieur Paul. Huh? Monsieur I don't Paul. know. I'm not French. I've eaten downstairs, but not upstairs. Um, Takumite. That's it. I've eaten. Well, I'm sorry. I have eaten at the San Angel that's across the promenade on the World Showcase Lagoon. I have not eaten at the. Isn't it also called. Sun and Hell inside the pyramid in Mexico. They both. So there's the. There's Hacienda Sun and Hell. Hacienda de San Hell and the Sun, on Hell Inn. Yeah, I've only eaten. I can't tell you. Which I haven't one's eaten which. the one inside the pyramid. I've gone to the bathroom there a lot when I was at La Cava de Tequila, though. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, I like you know sitting by the water and seeing the boats go by. Yeah, it's like Blue Bayou, but maybe the food's better. Yeah. Because holy crap, is Blue Bayou. Never mind. I don't want to get into, like, slamming Disneyland. But, but I've what, eaten at Blue Bayou two or three times, and every time it was horrible. One of the best um, in-park meals I've had was at Disney California Adventure, the Carthay Circle. Yeah. I would say that one's a little bougie. I think that one has a dress code, too. Um, I've only been in the lounge of uh, Carthay Circle. I mean, you can eat there. Like the outdoor patio and mm -hmm. stuff. I think they actually have a restaurant upstairs or something. That's the one. Um, we went there. We had a very. Uh, I've had good experiences there, but we had a, a very. Can I just? Can I tell? Like, can I spill tea? I don't even know spill if spill all the tea. Okay, I'm not going to name names. I was there with a friend, uh, and Tom was there too. Not that Tom's. On me. <laughs> I was with a friend and Tom. Uh, <laughs> Tom was there. Uh, some other people were there. Lee was there, um, and my friend was a cast member mm -hmm. at Disney World. And so we go to Carthay. We're going to go to Carthay, I think lounge, uh, downstairs. Right. And um, you check in on the app. So the app says, I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, we'll text you when your table's ready. Mm -hmm. So we stand outside of Carthay. We click the I'm here. It says, we'll text you when your table's ready. 
Okay. So we're hanging out there and then we're hanging out there and we're hanging out for a really long time. It gets to be like 30 minutes. Yeah. And we're like, so my friend who is a cast member politely walks up to them and says, we, we've been waiting 30 minutes and you've been seating other parties. I see there's empty tables. Is there, you know, something wrong? And they go, well, did you check in with us at the podium? He goes, no, I, I clicked here. It said, just wait and we'll text you. We've been standing 30 feet from the podium for a half hour, and you guys have had lots of conversations and stuff, you know, not paying attention to us. And um, we weren't rude to them. They're just like, no, we, we did what the app said. Right. You want people to use the app, then we do what the app yeah. says. So um, they go, oh, no, you have to check in at the podium. Oh. And he says, well, we've never had you, to do it that. should say that. Yeah. And they so, said, well, it's, it's been like that forever. He's like, but how are guests supposed to know that it's right. been like that forever when we're doing what the app tells us to do? And also, and they well, got, Disney World, you and just check in on the Next app. thing you know, there's like four of them surrounding him in like a weird, like creepy manner, like as if he's being unruly. And I know I can spot an unruly person. He was not being unruly. Yeah. And he said, I'm not really comfortable with this. Can I speak to a manager? And they said, no. <gasps> Disney. A Disney cast member said no. You won't be seeing a manager. Finally, someone else says, I'll look for the manager. And the manager never came. Okay. So we finally get seated. And then um, our server, we asked the server to see the manager. So then that server's wondering if the server screwed up. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know? And I've never asked for a manager in my life. I'm just a, I had a bad experience. I'll just right. file that away. Yeah, me too. Uh, but at this point, they wanted to talk to the manager. And I think a manager came and comped our drinks. Oh, that's But didn't nice. listen to, our, to oh. what happened. We're like, hey, I'm sorry you, uh, you had some problems. I know we've been backed up. So they thought the problem was that it took so long to be seated, not your employees were rude and nasty and, like, surrounded someone right. and refused to get a manager. Wow. Right? So that was an experience at Carthay Circle. Oh, I had a much lovelier experience at Carthay Circle. I'm so yeah. sorry that you had that. Uh, yeah, Dr. Feelgood in the chat says, I feel like the uber bougie experience has to be that private jet around the world with Adventures oh, by yeah. Disney. The so, $109,000 jet trip around the world. So I have, have done that? I have the one aunt who uh, is on the list for Club 33. Her brother, my uncle, only does Adventure by Disney vacations. I think you could say that Adventures by Disney is... The ultimate bougie Disney yeah. experience, right? They're extremely expensive, exclusive. Um, you could do some amazing things. But also, you're not doing a full... It's not really a full Disney experience. Your service and booking it and stuff mm -hmm. and dealing with... You have someone that you're dealing with the whole time. But you are going around the world and staying at hotels right. that are not Disney hotels. He's not a Disney person mm -hmm. like his two sisters, my other aunts, are. Um, he, he just likes being catered to, and he likes the fact that everything is taken care of for him. I like being catered to. I mean, who doesn't? But I, I don't, I haven't done an ABD yet. I'm just not there yet. And the, the, the blog and biz hasn't taken off like that for me to go ABD yet. Yeah. That is, you can make a case for that being the ultimate though, right? It, yeah. I mean, I, I just have my husband book my travel for me. So I, I do get taken care of. Lee is going on a virgin cruise soon. Oh, I've done one with her girlfriends, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to cater to Poppy's every need. While gone. <laughs> My dog and I will just watch TV, or maybe I'll play golf or something You're like gonna that. You're going to take her to the puppy spa you brought her to today. Oh my god, the new puppy spa that we took her to is amazing. It has zero entry pool. Oh, has like uh, so much outdoor play area. It's going to be a spot for good for sure. Aww. it's great. What a lucky girl. She'll maybe once a week or something like that, you know. Like, you know, when dad goes for a colonoscopy, it's a really good day for the dog to go to daycare that day, you know. We're probably not going to be very happy that day. Aw. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's Insider one said, talk about bougie catering to the dog. Yeah, my dog definitely is. My Pop dog is, is more spoiled than I am. That is for sure. My dog gets so much attention wherever she goes. She deserves it. She, I mean, why not? Dogs don't live long enough, so we got to spoil them while they're around. Yeah, so I, true. I saw a meme that was basically like, to women, it was like, if you could, 
you okay, someone presents you with this option. I don't remember exactly how this was worded, but it's basically like you can sell your husband, but the dog but your dog will live forever. And all the women are like, deal. Aww. I'll take it. I'll sell my hu- I'll sell my husband and my dog can live forever. I have a husband and not a dog, so I guess I'll take the husband. Yeah. Um We've been through the merchandise. We've been through the hotels. Um, there are a couple of hotels I feel like we should touch on. Yeah. Because uh, the Star Cruiser, while expensive and exclusive, I don't think would be considered like a five-star luxury hotel experience. It's more about the experience that you're doing. It's not like you're staying at uh, the, the Ritz-Carlton so somewhere. Or, my uh, bunk bed was not... Ritz Carlton right, quality. Right, you're sleeping on bunk beds. You're, but, the experience is curated for you, but it's not like you have. You go to like um, the JW Ritz mm-hmm. here in Orlando, and they have a giant lazy river yeah. and a golf course and a spa and massages. And I feel like that is probably more bougie than like I dressed up like I was a first <laughs> order officer and pressed a few buttons to pretend like I was blasting people. I had more fun doing that. Fun, yes. I've, I've, I. So I have stayed at the Ritz-Carlton and the JW several times, but I thought that I had a better time on the Star Cruiser. I could see that. You can have fun with things that aren't as luxurious, right? So just because it was more fun doesn't mean it was more bougie, even though it was very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, I've stayed, I guess the nicest hotel I've stayed at on property is probably the Waldorf Mm -hmm. a long time ago. Does that even count as on property? It's, I mean, I don't know. It's not even a Disney resort. No, but neither is the Four Seasons, and uh. it's very nice. The Ritz and JW are not even on property. Yeah. And I was talking about them. They're, That's the true. Orlando, by the way, is one of the only cities I'm aware of that has two JWs. Right? I've there's only the, stayed at that one. There's the JW at attached. Grand Lakes, which is by the attached to the Ritz Carlton property. Um, and then, phenomenal golf course, by the way. And then there's the new JW that is. Right there on Epcot Center Drive or World Center yeah, Drive or whatever you call it. I haven't been to that one. It looks pretty nice. But I've never been there. I would say the most bougie that I have felt on property was when I got to stay in one of those uh, two-story villas. Grand Villa? At Animal Kingdom. Oh, those with are great. the Savannah View, three bedrooms, full kitchen. Um, we... We uh, did room service breakfast, and it was all butler served. It was it was incredible. Oh uh, wow, yeah. So I have not stayed there, but we have had parties there. Like we have, as a company, like Jason got one yeah. one time. I think we filmed an episode of Cooking with Tony at did the we? Animal Kingdom Lodge Grand Villa. Yeah, but I haven't stayed there. I love. We had those bungalows. Mm-hmm. The overwater bungalows. Oh, at the that poly. was so much fun. That was so much fun. We had parties for the Wigs members. Yep. Uh, there on the 50th anniversary uh, for a couple nights. It was uh, to say goodbye to happily to ever after. To say goodbye to happily ever after, among other things. Which is back. Which is back. Good. Hopefully next is the ham and cheese book of Dio coming back <laughs> at Dahlia Lounge. On top of Coronado's uh, Grandestino Tower, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think in terms of lodging, what would be the bougiest, most luxurious experience uh, that you could get at I have not stayed, uh, I've not been to any of the international resorts, but some of the suites on these new Disney cruise ships, the funnel oh, suites, yeah. look amazing. Yeah. So I think that would be my choice. Is Do one of the bougie list? suites on a Disney cruise. Some of those are $20,000, $30,000 more. I don't, know. I don't know. I think it's a if you have to ask type of deal, right? right? I don't think... I don't think we include the Cinderella Castle suite in this well, discussion. okay. I guess you could buy your way into it, but I think you more celebrity your way into it. So I think you can also get it theoretically make a wish. Yeah. Right? I do have a son with a rare condition. He is make a wish eligible. Mm-hmm. I did talk with my husband like, wouldn't it be cool if we got inside of that Cinderella Castle suite? Yeah. He thinks it's not worth it. He thinks if you get a wish, you know, why, why yeah, would if you? If you have one wish, I don't think, if you have, I don't know how the system works. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can't wish for more, for unlimited wishes, though. No. 
I think you there was an old Onion video about that, about how the Make-A-Wish Foundation was no going wishing. broke because a kid wished for unlimited wishes. They're like, you know what? We can't get <laughs> Derek Jeter here in the hospital every day to play video games. No with. wishing for more wishes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't make anyone fall in love, I think, is another one. Is that an actual rule, or is that like from, from like a popular movie or something? It, it might have been from Aladdin. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought. I was kidding. Um yeah, so unfortunately, no, you can't do that. But so, but we're gonna let him pick whatever he wants. Yeah, what so. he wants. I don't know that a, a how he's which four year he's old four. boy. I don't know that his wish would be to stay in the Cinderella right. castle dream suite. I mean, if it is, that's great. Yeah. If it's not, let's find something amazing. Yeah. Maybe drive Lewis Hamilton's car to victory, and wreck Max Verstappen into the wall. <laughs> I can plant wishes in little kids' heads. Do you know that? Uh, well, just give me a few few <laughs> moments to to babysit your boys, and we'll have. I, some fe- I feel like we would have more fun with Daniel Ricardo. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't really know what the. I don't know what the fanciest hotel experience would be because all of them have like a all of all of the deluxe uh, resorts have like a presidential suite or yeah. the turret suite at the yacht club or one of these. But if I could choose one room. I think I'm going for the Polynesian, and we talked about this with some people recently. Uh, some Wigs members came, and we went on a fireworks cruise. Um, uh, room 1601 at the Polynesian Samoa building. Uh, that is where John Lennon signed the paperwork to officially end the Beatles. Oh. So if you can get room 1601 at the Poly, I think that would be maybe not the bougiest, but probably like a pretty darn good story that you could tell people. That is a really good story. I still probably would go with the bungalows. Yeah. Uh, another historical one, of course, is we, I think Tom or somebody got upgraded to the presidential suite at the Contemporary, and it was the suite where Richard Nixon, like, refreshed was, yeah. before or after he uh, went down to the Ballroom of the Americas and gave the I'm not a crook speech. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, a lot of people tell different versions of this story. And a common version of that story is that he was standing in front of the Mary Blair mural in the contemporary. Uh, that's not true. Okay. He was in the Ballroom of the Americas. You can watch it. And then you go to the Ballroom of Americas, and you're like, yep, it was definitely in here. Yeah. <laughs> because it hasn't changed much at all. If it's changed at all, it hasn't been much. It, it still looks like it. Uh, but, yeah, if you're, into, if you're into Richard Nixon, yeah, go stay there. If you're into the Beatles, it's room 1601 at the Poly. Uh, I'm probably more into the Beatles, but I'd be more interested in staying at the, in the presidential suite at the Contemporary. Yeah, I mean, room 1601, number one, it, it lo- it's just a regular room. Right. Ground floor, you open the sliding glass door, and you're just right there at the pool. Yeah. Like, it's a very, very busy... Like, there are kids all climbing all over the place, running on the fake grass right outside there. It's like, it's probably the... In terms of like peace and quiet, it's probably the worst location in the entire Polynesian. It puts you in a uh, bad mood enough to break up with your band. Yeah, <laughs> you, but you and your secretary on your uh, little love making trip break up the Beatles. <laughs> That's what happened. He was there. Well, I think it was a formality at this point. The Beatles were already done, yeah. but yeah, he was there with uh, his his uh, girlfriend at the time, who was also his secretary. I, d- I don't recall her name. Um, May Pang, I think. I don't know. People thought it was Yoko Ono. It was not Yoko Ono. It was someone else. Someone else. So, uh, oh yeah, somebody put the uh, the I am not a crook uh, animated gif in the in the wigs chat. I'm trying to think of anything else that's particularly bougie. Uh, there are a lot of experiences that are uh, guided tours that are not mm-hmm. the VIP tours that are pretty cool. I've done uh, the. the- Keys Animal to the Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah, Keys to the Kingdom. I've only done Walk and Walt's Footsteps at Disneyland. How was that, that was pretty good. It wasn't fancy. It was pretty good, though. Yeah, you I know? wouldn't I wouldn't have called the Keys to the Kingdom uh, fancy. Mm-hmm. But it was cool to see the, you know, tunnels. When we went to, um, when Tom and I went to Disneyland last year, um, I don't remember what we were covering. But we had to go to Burbank for something. And by something, I mean to pick up his giant collection of Country Bears merchandise he had purchased. And 
uh, we decided to go eat at Tam O'Shanter, which is a, a legendary location there where Walt used to go and all this stuff. So um, we asked if we could sit at Walt's table. There's a particular table that's Walt's. And I said, I'm sorry. Um, there's a private group coming in for that. And sure enough, uh, we see them come in, and it's all Adventures by Disney people. It's part of one of the tours that you can do with ABD where they, they went and they got to sit in there and, and do all that stuff. So, yeah, that again, not bougie, but really cool. That There's some really, really cool. cool stuff that's not like it's not like your uh, your uncle who wants to travel with luxury but doesn't care about Disney. Like right. He's not going to care about that. But but the people that care about Disney and have the means to do those type of tours are going to care about that type of experience. And to go, look. I believe that same tour also lets you go into Walt's old office. Oh, that's cool. And see the Sherman Brothers piano that's in mm. there. And well, I, I guess it's Walt's piano. <laughs> but right. but you know, it a pretty pretty cool thing. I think maybe you even go to see some Jim Henson stuff. I mean, really cool experiences can be had with the right amount of money. Unfortunately, I'm not that guy. I can't afford to do that stuff, but I appreciate that those things exist. And that bougie Disney is a thing to yeah. aspire to. Maybe one of these days, you and I will be able to afford Club 33, pull, put on our Gucci bags, go on an ABD. I want to wear and... the Gucci sweater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe so. And you know what? I don't, I don't begrudge you for having these bougie experiences, Desi, because I think you're someone or that anyone. appreciates it. I No, what rubs me the wrong way is someone who doesn't appreciate it. Someone yeah. who just... Um, Maybe they've just had money their whole life, or maybe they uh, are being dragged along on something they don't care about to do one of these fancy experiences, and their whole life is just traveling from one fancy experience to the next, and they they can't appreciate these things. I think when you make something special, a special experience, that it has to stand out from your normal everyday experiences uh, to count. Otherwise, all you are is just a rich person. Right. Right? If you're somebody that's actually... Uh, setting aside their hard-earned money to do something that's meaningful, I think that's much more important and much more admirable. I'm, I'm jealous of um, – I'm jealous in the sense that I wish I could do it, but I don't have hard feelings against someone that legitimately is into this stuff. I yeah. met people in the airport one time. Um, they, I was flying to Kansas City. They were flying to Kansas City, and they were – Returning after their, uh, I think it was like their second or third Star Cruiser voyage. But I could see in their faces how much they enjoyed it, how much mm -hmm. it meant to them. So, yeah, do I wish that I could afford to go on the Star Cruiser not only once but like multiple times? Yeah. Of course. But do I begrudge people who it meant a lot to for sacrificing their money and stuff to do it? No. I if think I could, great. I would go again. Yeah. I wish... I thought it was going to be a flex to be like, I went on the last weekend of the Star Cruiser, like the last, you know, Saturday, Sunday voyage. Mm -hmm. um, and after getting back, I was like, I wish that I had done an earlier one so that I could have tried to book one of the later ones again and gone again. I had an opportunity to do it towards the very, very end. Um, and I don't think it would have worked out anyway, but I was close to having this opportunity to go do it. But I wouldn't have been able to take Lee with me. Mm -hmm. And I think not only would that be bad for my home life of experiencing this thing without bringing she her. She could have gone to Canada. She could have gone to Canada. She would have much rather gone to the Star Cruiser. She's, <laughs> she's into that stuff. She, she would have uh, giggled and had a blast. She would have been skipping around town for a week. She would have been catcalling uh, Kylo Ren. No, she's not into that. <laughs> she only likes me. But... Um, but, you know, I think part of it is not only to be able to experience these things, but to share them. And yeah. while your husband was in Canada doing his thing and you didn't share that experience with him, you shared it with people you cared about and yes. you cared about the thing, right? People that cared enough to say, you know what? I'm going to fork over the money somehow to do this before yeah. it's gone. My two so, aunts and Kamila. Right. I mean, I'm, I bet you guys had a blast. I'll we bet did. they were sick of you, like, drawing attention to everyone as you being the bad guy, though. Oh, oh, I got into my character. I'm, I I do not doubt it. I I don't doubt it at all. Um, I actually spent some time with some friends over the weekend, and one of them went on the Star Cruiser 
and he role played as a First Order officer, and oh. his videos are hilarious. Being the First Order was way more fun, I think. Mm-hmm. Way more fun. I think if you get into it and you immerse yourself in that experience, it's it's special. Um, but, like, I remember going to Baseline Tap House one day, and there's a family sitting there, and I saw their pen. I knew they were on the Star mm-hmm. Cruiser, right? And I'm like, look at us. Who would have thought? We're all just sitting in Baseline Tap House. <laughs> The only difference is that you spent $6,000 to do something else, and you're sitting in Baseline Tap House instead. But they probably they were killing their studios day. They weren't. I don't think they were doing that probably on their excursion day. They probably were just still wearing the pins and did it, like, on their last day. It seemed like they were, like, I don't know. It seemed like they were taking a break from their experience, which is fine. Experience I, it the way you want yeah. to. I stayed in Batu the whole time, except I did go to Star Tours as well. Do we think that? Oh, I'll be on Star Tours in a few hours. Um, do we think that uh, the box truck still exists? Can we buy that at auction oh or God. something? I would love it. The galactic box truck. I st- I still have hope that they're going to bring back the experience in some, in some way. Form, yeah. So they probably still need the box truck. Why couldn't they, Desi? Uh, why couldn't they just open the restaurant and the show and have a dinner show? I think you they go do. there, they have a store, you have a dinner, you have a show, you leave. It's and it, it's not as immersive. I what I think they should do is bring it back and like during the week have it like that where it's like anybody can come just do the dinner thing, yeah. just do the shopping and then maybe on the weekends or maybe, you know, not even every weekend, every other weekend or once a month, have the full experience for the people who want the full experience and then have the, you know, more a la carte experience for those who, who can't do the full experience. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. Why let this beautiful concrete building go to waste? It is really cool on the people inside. People want to see it. I did not feel claustrophobic at all. Yeah, people want to see it. Yeah, they have a climate simulator if you feel claustrophobic. You can just go outside and it feels suspiciously like Orlando. Well, I mean, you have to get acclimated to Batu because they have three suns. It's so hot. Yeah. Is there no shade when there's three suns? I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It's kind of weird. You get weird sunburns probably. <laughs> Why do you think, uh, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi aged like 60 years in the span of 20 years uh, because Tatooine had two sons? I think I I would be busy trying to figure out, like, which one am I orbiting around and which one is just, like, kind of out there and which one? I think in The Mandalorian, when he landed on Tatooine, you could see it was like two tiny suns orbiting Mm -hmm. the same way maybe a moon orbits the Earth. Oh, so you don't orbit the sun. The sun right. orbits you. So you're mm-hmm. not a solar system. This Instead, the solar parts are a planet system. Yes. Okay. I don't know. People smarter than me came up with this stuff. So There's new sci-fi I got to learn, the, um, the three, three body problem or something like that. Have you heard of this? No. Okay. So I might be getting a name wrong. I think it's called three body problem. It's a huge like it's like the first like kind of modern sci-fi novel that like went uh, went crazy in China. So this young guy, he's a he's a billionaire in China and he's like, I want to make this happen. And um, I want to make this a series. I want to like start a film franchise. So he gets uh, a guy that's a lawyer to help him try to secure the rights and get all this so they can actually create movies of this franchise. And it's a, some sci-fi Star Wars-ish type of thing. And um, the guy helps him get the right. Get the, I might be telling this story wrong. The hel- guy helps him get the rights. They get the rights to this. They, they are going to make it with Netflix, right? So through the course of making this, he kind of, the guy that helped him, he kind of demotes him or pushes him aside for whatever reason. I don't know why. It says, no, this guy's going to run it and this guy's going to run that and you're going to be legal counsel for such and such a thing. Well, that guy doesn't like it. So that guy looked up um, different ways to kill people with poison. Oh, my God. So he basically experimented with different, like, chemicals that he found online or something. Uh, he experimented by, I guess, killing things like animals or 
checking her out. He had like a lab set up to try to do this. So he put these chemicals in pills, like a probiotic thing, and gave the guy a thing of probiotic pills. Like, take these. It'll make you feel better. And the guy took them. And then it was like a combination of so many like poisonous things that like he went to the hospital and then like 10 days later he died. He had been slowly doing this over a period of time though and having people drink things. So not only him, but then four other people that were like promoted over him or that worked on this group um, have all shown signs of this and were all hospitalized with like poisoning. But I don't think they died, but the billionaire guy died. And now this movie or series just came to Netflix. It's on Netflix right now. It's like, I think it's called Three Body Problem. I don't know. I got to I gotta watch it now. Okay. Maybe they created this whole story and it's fake just to create more intrigue around the franchise. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know how that relates to uh, Bougie Disney, but it sounds like an interesting show. Well, if you've been watching this podcast for any <laughs> length of time, you know that nothing really makes sense here. We don't, we don't, I don't have an outline with me. I don't have a script. We just kind of... No. We just kind of talk. Yeah. And while we have generally spoken about bougie Disney experiences, we we We've often stray rails. from the path yeah. to talk about things we know better. Because <laughs> I don't know about bougie experiences very well. Says the guy who went on multiple VIP tours, has been to several Club 33s. Yeah. I mean, I am fortunate. I'll say that. I've, I'm fortunate to have done that. But I think in terms of actually laying out cash for one of the pre- premium a, a flight around the world or... Any of these amazing experiences. You know, not yet. Maybe one day. Have you know. been to any uh, Disney parks outside of the U.S.? No. Nope. Domestic only. I've been to all the domestic parks multiple times. I have an annual pass at uh, at both. but No know. premier pass. No. I have the magic key, and then I have the the sorcerer pass here. I don't need, No, I think I might have upgraded to the Incredible Pass. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't even remember which tier is which, except I know that Pixie is the one I don't want. No, Sorcerer is like the only dates that are blacked out are like the week of like Christmas and New Year's and mm-hmm. times you don't want to go Thanksgiving. Anyway. Like times I refuse to go to the parks anyway. In fact, yeah. I'm often not in town. Um, so it used to be that like um, sometime during spring break would always be blocked out on the Sorcerer, mm-hmm. but they changed that. So Sorcerer is basically gold. Yep. Right. So Incredit Pass is platinum. Mm-hmm. Sorcerer's gold. Pirate is silver. Pixie is like. Weekday. Puce. I don't know what color. But, you know, I don't know. Pixie is like, come on Tuesdays between three and four, uh, and you get half off with a Campbell's soup label. Or something. I, I don't, some people are okay with the Pixie Dust. Every now and then, the Pixie Dust Pass comes in. Handy. I have known people that actually had a real, a full annual pass and had a Pixie Dust pass at the same time, just in case they couldn't get a park pass under one. Oh, if they've maxed, if they'd maxed out their park passes, it's not really as big a concern anymore no. with like good to go days and all yeah. that stuff. But it, I do know that people have said, oh, you know, and there was a time I think you only got three. Yep. And so when they could only get three park passes, they're like, that's not enough. So they got the Pixie Dust pass to get to fill in the blanks. That's committed. That's kind of bougie. Yeah. Having two annual passes. Yeah. No, I've never been that bougie. Well, no, that's not true because if we talk about my dad had the VIP pass where he could get himself and four other people yeah. in for free. And then I think as an adult, I had my own annual pass so that I could go without him. So yeah. theoretically. I got my I first annual to. pass when I was in high school. I don't want to date myself, uh, but you got it met at TTC. They had a hedge. You went around the hedge into a little office. They took your picture. They punched out a Mickey Mouse shape of your picture, and your annual pass was like kind of like a driver's license with a mm-hmm. Mickey-shaped photo. And I think it was like under $200 for sure, the annual pass back then. Times, they have changed. Yeah. Of course, there were only three parks back then. We just had an episode about Universal and uh, about prices. Mm-hmm. And... Um, You know, the Universal single-day pass is very close in cost to the Disney single-day pass. Um, I don't know if their pricing is as dynamic as Disney's for like, oh, it's a Magic Kingdom on a Saturday. It's going to cost a billion dollars or whatever. But generally speaking, their their prices are very much in line with each other. Um, And then someone had commented, oh, Universal is 35% cheaper. And I'm like, 
Is and it? I think they must be talking about the annual pass, but they only have two theme parks. Right. So they like to claim three. Right. They call they claim three because they say Volcano Bay is a theme is the same thing. Well, in that case, um, then Disney. Disney has five. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you count Winter Summerland, they have six. Yeah, I don't. Um, but then you think about the value, how expensive. My Inspire Key pass at Disneyland was sixteen hundred dollars, and there's only two parks there, so. That's pretty. That's pretty bold. Yeah. That's pretty bold and aggressive. And they sell out of them because then they'll stop selling them because they they run out. Yeah. So. Uh, so my ultimate bougie experience at Disney is having an Inspire key. <laughs> 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 the most money I've ever spent on anything Disney related <laughs> is sixteen hundred dollars, not counting cruises. Yeah. So. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add before we go? Uh, I think we've covered all the bougie bases. Well, there you have it. We've covered the bougie bases. I'm sure that our audience has a lot more bougie things that they would like to talk about. You know, from from maybe you used the 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 good bread on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich oh. instead of using the Wonder Bread. I don't know. Uh, that's how I did bougie when I was young. The brand name Kool Aid and not, not that flavor aid or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, let us know in the comments. And please, thanks for thanks for joining us. Join us again. Please like and subscribe. Obviously, we need more people to like and subscribe. It helps us in the uh, algorithm, apparently, I'm told. And since we sometimes go on for an hour, sometimes we go on for two or three hours, you never know what you're going to get here. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned uh, for more. We'll have more coming up every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll see you next time. And then, Desi, you say, see you real soon. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.